Hi, it's Kushino. It is another fan fiction story of Luffy. What if Luffy was an emperor? How powerful he is? Let's find out. Before we start, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Scope of the story Different Devil Fruit. Watch as Luffy makes his mark on the world. Starts off at the war. Prequel coming soon. Gura Gura Luffy, hope you enjoy. Let's begin. The Marines were waiting for the convoy that was carrying Ace to arrive. On the island the citizens were being evacuated for the upcoming war. All around the world, people are watching the Navy transponder snails. Everyone at Marineford could just feel the tension building. After the citizens had been loaded up on the ships and left, the ships with Ace arrived. Suddenly a voice came on over the intercom. To all soldiers, report to the Gulf. Get ready for the public execution of Port Gaz D Ace. I repeat, all soldiers, report to the Gulf. Once the ships docked, Ace was escorted in and placed in a cell until it was time for his execution. At noon they got him ready by cuffing his hands. Stand up, said one of the two executioners that were going to be escorting him. After walking for about two minutes, they came to a large set of doors guarded by two marines that opened it. Once they opened it, an extremely large staircase was revealed. Climb. And with that they began to ascend, South Blue. It's in three hours now. I wonder if Whitebeard has arrived yet. I don't know. Do you think he's really gonna be there? He's a big deal but isn't he too old? You think so? He was around before the Great Pirate Era. He must be senile by now. We haven't heard his name in any big news for years. How can you guys take this so lightly? Because he's unignorable, the Navy HQ has called up its elites and is expecting him with all their forces. I'm almost certain that Whitebeard is going to appear, said an old woman. And then what's gonna happen? I don't know. How am I supposed to know? East Blue, he's a pirate of a different era. Is it possible for him to beat the Navy HQ? It's not possible for any pirate to attack Marineford. That's not true. I think it was 20 years ago, a pirate called Shiki the Golden Lion invaded M. Ironford and left the Navy HQ half destroyed. This time it's going to be worse. No matter who wins, a lot of people will die. It'd be better if he didn't appear. If nothing besides the execution happens, that'd be for the best. North Blue, on a snow island, some guys were trying to get into a bar. Hey, we want drinks, old man. Are you asking me to open the bar on a day like this? We're expecting a big war in any minute. Go home. If the world's still here tomorrow, I'll open it. Then just sell us some drinks. It feels like we're the ones who are on the scaffold. We can't do without drinking. West Blue. Inside a bar. He's not just another old man. He hasn't lost at all. It was just a year ago, when we saw him sitting right there. We thought we were dead. Grand Line, is Whitebeard that outrageous? Even those kids know it. They're singing as they jump rope. Over with the kids jumping rope. The pirate Whitebeard is scarier than a devil. Up on a cliff a woman was on her knees. Oh, God. Where is this world headed? Sabra de Archipelago. At Sabra de Archipelago at the Evacuation site, residents are watching the proceedings of the execution on monitors. Reporters and cameramen from various places are standing by here to break the news quickly to the world. That's really the best of Navy HQ. I assume that Whitebeard knows about this. But still, will he venture to be there? Every lookout ship that the Navy sent has been swiftly sunk and there has been no report of a sighting of Whitebeard. So tension at Marineford continues to rise. And there is less than three hours left until the looming execution. Marineford, we find Garp sitting across from Senguko. Whatever had been said upset Garp as he slammed his fist on the desk spilling a cup of tea. I have a problem with that. Is that really necessary? Asked Garp. This public execution is not just an execution of a pirate. It has great significance for the future of the world. That's why it's necessary to. Garp started to walk away but Senguko continued. You're responsible for this matter since you're one of the parties involved. Don't forget that, Garp. Garp stopped for a moment before he slowed open the door and left. Out on the ships surrounding Marineford, they were making their last preparations. Over on the island itself, Marines were waiting at their battle stations. Elite soldiers are summoned from all over the world totaling almost 100,000. The crescent-shaped bay area and the whole island are surrounded by 50 navy ships and numerous cannons have been set at the bay area. And in front of all the marshaled forces that can be seen from sea, stand five ruffians who hold the key to the war. Pirates the Shichibukai, 
Bartholomew Kuma, Gecko Moria, Don Quixote Doflamingo, Dracul Mihawk, and Boa Hancock. Guarding closely below the scaffold are the Navy's greatest powers, the three admirals, Navy Admiral Aokiji Kuzan, Navy Admiral Akainu Sakazuki, Navy Admiral Kazaru Borsalino. Every force of justice imaginable is now waiting for the Whitebeard pirates to stop them from rescuing Ace. Back with Ace as they neared the doors leading to the scaffolding, he had a flashback to when he and Luffy were kids. Quick flashback. Listen, Luffy. We have to live without leaving any regrets. Aha. Uh -huh. We gotta go out to sea someday and live as we like. Freer than anyone else. End flashback. With that they reached the doors and walked outside. After making it to the scaffolding he was cuffed to it. This is the man. Who may trigger a war that will shake the world. And he is the one who holds the fate of the world now. Garp and Senguko arrived beneath the scaffolding. Okay, Garp. I'll tell them everything. So be it. I'll be downstairs. With that Senguko made his was onto the execution platform. Step aside for a minute, he said to the two executioners. Yes, sir, down below, Fleet Admiral Senguko. What's going on? Back with Senguko, give me a transponder snail. Yes, sir. With the transponder snail in hand he moved to stand next to Ace. I have something to tell you all. Port Gaz D Ace. It's about the great significance of his death today. Ace, tell them the name of your father. He spoke through the transponder snail for all to hear. My father is Whitebeard. No, yes, he is. Whitebeard is my only father. We looked for you with our eyes wide open at that time. Because we heard that there might be a child of that man on some island. Based on a small amount of reliable information from Cypher Pol, we checked all newborns. And preborn children. And their mothers but we couldn't find you. No wonder. Your mother risked her life to bear you. She used a trick that can be called mother's pride. That has misled us. Indeed, the whole world. There is an island called Batalera in South Blue. Your mother's name is Portgaz de Rouge. She did something that completely defied the natural law. For the love of her child. She kept her baby inside her womb for twenty months. By this point Ace was pale and sweating bullets. No way. And as soon as she gave birth to you, she lost all of her strength and passed away right there. A year and three months after the father's death, the child was born with the blood of the world's most heinous man in his veins. That was you. You know it, surely. Your father is. The king of the pirates gold Roger. Silence. Sabaradi Archipelago. Your father is. The king of the pirates gold Roger. Fire fist. Ace is a son of gold Roger. This is huge news. Call the head office. Let's issue an extra. Most of the reporters took off to make the report. Does it continue? Still. The bloodline of the king of the pirates. I can't believe that the arch villain had a kid. The legend of Gold Roger continues. I'm so relieved that they got him. If he's a son of the king of the pirates, he must be atrocious. If I'd caught him and put him up for auction, I would have made a fortune. Said a guard from the auction house. This execution is turning into quite a show. Said a rich asshole. So the strength of, fire fist, is in his blood. Then, he has the one piece, too. Fire fist, is as food as dead anyway. He will be wiped off the face of the earth soon. Marineford, he is not the biological brother of Luffy, then, Hancock asked herself. Rogers, son, his biological son alive. This must be a miracle. All people connected to Roger should have been executed at that time, said Moria. Since his brother is Luffy San, I thought his father was Dragon, too, said Kobe to Helmepo. I taught so, too. What's the deal here? They're not biological brothers? Asked Helmepo. It was two years ago. You took over your mother's name and rose up in the world of the sea. As the captain of the spade pirates with your exquisite speed and power. And that's when we noticed. That Roger's blood still flowed. But Whitebeard also noticed that at the same time. And to make you the next king of the pirates, he let the son of his old rival onto his ship. Said Senguko. No. I got on the ship to make my dad the next king. No one believes that except you. In fact, it made it harder for us to catch you. You were protected by Whitebeard. If we let you go free, we know you'll use your abilities to become the next king. That's why it means a great deal to execute you here today. Even if it means risking an all-out war with Whitebeard. This received a thunderous cheer from the Marines. Fleet Admiral Senguko. 
I have a report. The gate of justice is opening without any order. And we can't make contact with the control room. What? It's quiet, said Hancock as everyone was watching the sea. But it's almost unnatural, said Doflamingo. After about a minute the alarm sounded. There they come, shouted the lookout. Everyone, battle stations. They appeared so suddenly. Where did they get in? said Senguko as he saw the ships. It's a vast fleet of pirate ships. Where's Whitebeard? Look for him. Forty-three ships in total. We can't find Whitebeard or the commanders. But they're all allies of Whitebeard. I didn't expect him to come, said Ace. Shall we attack? Not yet. Whitebeard should be somewhere near, too. And he must be up to something so keep an eye on the sea. This is fun. I'm getting excited. Just come on, Whitebeard, said Doflamingo. Suddenly the water in the bay started to spread out and ripple. No way, said Senguko. I see a shadow in the bay. No way. I get it now. They got all their ships. Coated and approached from underwater, said Senguko. That's when the bay exploded and the Moby Dick appeared. As the coating disappeared and the ship came to a stop, the commanders appeared on the deck. But not before three more Moby Dicks appeared in the bay. There are three more Whitebeard pirate ships. They've infiltrated the bay. That's the first division commander Marco. Fourteen commanders, they're all here. That's when Whitebeard walked onto the bow. It's been a while, Senguko. Whitebeard, you better tell me that my beloved son is all right. I can't believe that we let them get this close, said Senguko. Give me a second, Ace. Pops. Suddenly the sea started to splash like crazy. What? A sea quake. There's only one person who could have caused that, but he isn't here, said Senguko. Hmm, what's going on? I guess we'll just have to see what happens, thought Whitebeard. Earlier with escapees from Impel Down, move aside, I'm going to warn them that I am coming, said a man as he cracked the air. Present, after about 30 seconds the ocean calmed down. Is it over? What caused that quake? Pops. Everybody. I ignored your advice and took off. Why didn't you just give up on me? I'm the one who caused all of this, shouted Ace. No I'm the one who told you to go. Son. That's a lie. Cut it out. You told me not to go but I. I'm the one who told you to go. I'm the one who told him to go. Isn't that right, Marco? Yes, that's what I heard. I'm sorry that we put you through so much, Ace. Everybody in this world knows. What will happen to someone who messes with our crewmate, said Marco. We won't let anybody who hurts you get away with it, Ace. Count on us. We will save you. Prepare yourselves, Navy HQ. We brought this upon ourselves, said Aokiji. It's too late to say such a thing, said Akainu. That's so hideous, said Kazaru. Moria started laughing. On this side, we, the Shichibukai, the Navy's greatest powers three admirals and a hundred thousand elite soldiers. On that side, there are the Whitebeard pirates and more than forty allied ships. Now, how do you want to do it, Whitebeard? said Moria. It's so exciting, said Doflamingo as he licked his lips. He looked over at Mihawk. Do you want to be on the sideline as always? I know that you just came to kill some time. Mihawk just continued to stare out at THTE front. So be it. Suddenly the sea level started to lower. Hey, what's wrong? asked the Marine. The water is receding. What does it mean? It means that something's wrong. Now it was just a waiting game, to see what would happen. They've quieted down all of the sudden, said Django. Are they waiting for Whitebeard's command? asked Fullbody. I can hardly breath, said Kobe. That's when the sea started rising. The water level is rising again. The other marine looked out to the sea through a pair of binoculars. What's that? That's when the whole island started to shake. I can hear the ground rumbling, said Moria. Now it, s coming. The sea quake that he set up before. Coming in the form of tsunami said Garp. Look. What is that? The marines shouted as two giant waves formed on the sides of the island. It's a giant tsunami. Don't think that our superior forces will guarantee us victory, said Senguko. As soon as the two waves were close enough, Aokiji jumped into the air with his arms out. Ice Age, thus freezing the waves as well as stopped the panicking marines. That was close, said Helmepo. Admiral Aokiji did it, said Kobe. Partisan, 
said Aokiji as he launched what appeared to be three tridents made out of ice at Whitebeard. Whitebeard just blasted them apart with his haki. However the blast continued into Aokiji who turned into ice and was sent careening into the ocean. He stopped on the surface and placed his hand on it, freezing the entire bay. The whole bay is frozen. The ships can't move now, said a pirate as he looked over the rail of the ship he was on. We have the greatest force of the Navy HQ the admirals on our side, shouted a marine trying to boost morale. That's right, there's no reason to be afraid of the whitebeards. Fire! Destroy the Moby Dick! The war has begun. Let's go! We've got a good foothold now. Show them what we're capable of, shouted Vista. With that the pirates started their charge. The commanders came out, too. Don't stop firing. Mount a counter-offensive, said Smoker to Tashigi as he too charged. Hi, said Tashigi as she ran and saw Vista. He must be the 5th Division Commander Flower Sword Vista. She was so focused on Vista that she didn't notice a pirate attacking her from behind, but luckily Smoker saved her. Stay alert, Tashigi. They're all mighty soldiers not just the commanders. Don't forget it. I got it, Smoker-san. The sounds of swords clashing together, cannons, and gunshots could be heard everywhere. There was no letting up on either side, as the pirates continued to push on until they ran into the vice admirals. It's not that easy, huh? Here come the vice admirals of the Navy HQ, said a pirate. It's so rare to see all of them together at the same place. It's like when they have a buster call. But when it comes to Pops and us, it won't work that way. That's when Mihawk jumped down onto the lower level. Dracul Mihawk. Is the warlord on the move? Asked the marine. That's very unusual, said Kazaru. The capricious, Hawkeye, seems like he's willing to fight, said Akainu. What? Do you want to fight? Asked Doflamingo. I just want to figure out the true distance between us and that man who seems like right in front of us. He said as he drew his black sword and with a swift downward strike, he sent out a blast of green energy towards Whitebeard. The bast cut through the ice as it made its way towards Whitebeard, but just before it reached the Moby Dick it was blocked by Diamond Jozu. He deflected the blow of the world's greatest swordsman. He must be 3rd Division Commander Diamond Jozu, shouted a marine. Jozu smiled. Kazaru feeling bored attacked Whitebeard but was stopped by Marco. He warded off the admiral's attack. What's that? He's engulfed in a blue flame. Blue flame? asked Kazaru. You can't reach. Dot the king. So easily, said Marco. So fearsome, these whitebeard pirates, said Kazaru. What's with his body? He took Kazaru-san's attack directly but didn't fall. So he has the power as they say. It's even rarer than a logia. Zoan-type mythical creature, said Kazaru. So he's the first division commander. No matter what kind of attack he absorbs, he recovers by flames. Marco the Phoenix. Marco landed a kick that sent Kazaru crashing into the ground. All right I am tired as hell so everything up till Luffy's arrival will be cannon. Did you just hear that, Helmapo-san? Their strategy, said Kobe. Yeah, they're gonna forget the schedule and execute, fire fist, ace, if they do that. What's that? Asked Helmepo looking in the sky. All over Marineford the fighting paused as they watched a ship land in the hole that Jozu made. There was silence until footsteps could be heard. Out walked Jinbei, Crocodile, Ivankov, and the 200 escapees. Once they stopped another set of footsteps could be heard. The pirates made a path for a young man dressed in, see profile link, that walked to the front with his eyes shadowed by a straw hat. When he got to the front he looked up revealing a sinister grin. You think you should fear Whitebeard, you ain't seen anything. That's the superstar rookie, Monkey D. Luffy. All over Marineford the fighting paused as they watched a ship land in the hole that Jozu made. There was silence until footsteps could be heard. Out walked Jinbei, Crocodile, Ivankov, and the 200 escapees. Once they stopped another set of footsteps could be heard. The pirates made a path for a young man dressed in, see profile link, that walked to the front with his eyes shadowed by a straw hat. When he got to the front he looked up revealing a sinister grin. You think you should fear Whitebeard, you ain't seen anything. That's the superstar rookie, Monkey D. Luffy. So let's get it started shall we, Sabra D. Archipelago. What is he doing there? He's a monster, just like Whitebeard. What is going to happen now that he is there? This is what the people watching were talking about. 
Meanwhile, the reporters were relaying the information to their offices as fast as possible. Marineford, Luffy, shouted Ace and Garp. I knew only you had the power to create that sea quake. The Gura Gura no me, one, made him a quake man. We could well fail. Because that man has the power to destroy the world, said Senguko. The grandson of the hero Garp and the son of the revolutionary dragon. I'll take care of him for good, Akainu said to himself. Luffy just stood there smiling. That's when Ivankov spoke up. Where's Croco boy? Oh, I think he chickened out and there he is shouted Buggy. Luffy sighed as he looked over to see Crocodile heading for Whitebeard. He disappeared and just as Crocodile reached Whitebeard, he reappeared right in front of him. He grabbed Crocodile by his throat and slammed him onto the Moby Dick's deck. Now that we are here, our agreement has been fulfilled. Why do you want to protect Whitebeard? Crocodile wheezed out as he struggled to get free but was having little success. That's easy. Right now he wants to save Ace just like me. So until this is over we are allies aiming for the same goal. He said as he slammed Crocodile down releasing him. Crocodile was instantly surrounded by the Whitebeards. Don't let him come close to Pops. Ace's brother is quite a fighter. Said Marco looking back at this. Whitebeard looked down at Luffy's straw hat. Hey, squirt, that straw hat you have. It looks like the one that, red-haired, was once wearing. Luffy then turned to Whitebeard without the slightest bit of fear. Old man. You know Shanks. Eh, I'm not surprised. Shanks left it to me. You came here to rescue your brother. No shit. Do you know who you're messing with? Luffy just gave him a bored expression. Does it look like I give a? I know what you're up to. You wanna become the king of the pirates, right? But I'm the one who'll become the king. Declared Luffy as everyone paled. How saucy you are. I won't forgive you if you cause me trouble, spoiled brat. Just stay the hell out of my way old man. I'm gonna do as I like. I'm gonna rescue Ace. He's competing. Started Ivankov. With Whitebeard. Finish Buggy. Let me clear this up real quick. Everyone knows that Luffy is extremely powerful. However no one thought that he would just flat out challenge Whitebeard. It can't be. Said Mr. Three as he fell on his back. We can punish all of them by death. Can't we? Senguko-san. Asked the recovered Kazaru. Absolutely. Luffy. Pops. Said Ace. Hang on, Ace. I'll get there. I'll get there very soon. He's the rookie superstar straw hat. Said a pirate. How does he know Whitebeard? Asked a marine officer. I don't get it. He should hide after breaking out of the great prison. Why bother coming to this living hell? Said Helmepo. Because he is Luffy san. Said Kobe. Ha. Huh. That's the way he is. Pops. Luffy was all Ace could say at the moment. So he is Straw Hat, thought Whitebeard, old man. Hmm. I heard while on a navy ship that they are gonna execute Ace early. So they're gonna execute Ace immediately. Are you sure? They said they would after getting, all set, for something. But they were using codes so I couldn't understand. I know that you wanna rescue Ace, too, so I wanted to share that with you. I see. That was important information. Thank you. No problem. How can he talk on equal terms with Whitebeard? shouted Buggy. How brave he is. Only his son could do it, said Ivankov. Okay. Ace, I'm coming now. With that Luffy jumped off the ship. Luffy started charging but in front of him was a group of marines charging at him. So he punched the ground causing a decent sized block of ice to rise in the air. Once it was high enough he punched it causing it to break into shards that struck down the marines. Get thee out of my way small fry, he shouted without slowing down. So he is Ace's brother. Keep up with the boy. Let's go, third division, said Jozu. We should go, too, said Jinbei as he jumped down followed by the others. Fourteenth division, let's charge ahead, said Speed Jiru. Yes, Commander Jiru, as Jiru launched an attack. They're so encouraged by just one daredevil. But our strategy is airtight. Don't hesitate. Do as I said shouted Senguko. Damn Senguko. I bet he thinks that he doesn't need to stick to the schedule for the execution of a mere pirate. The key is after they're all set. For what? said Whitebeard as Marco landed next to him. Pops. I heard that they're moving Ace's execution forward. I heard. How are Squire and the others doing? They're tied up with the vice-admirals at the bay head. I'm gonna fly there and help. No, 
Wait. I bet it must be a part of his plan that we'd get some leaked information and advance. Senguko wouldn't let his enemy know his strategy so easily. He's not that foolish. Suddenly on the battlefield Kazaru blasted his way to be in front of Luffy. A kick at the speed of light, said Jiru as he jumped backwards. Don't push your luck. I won't let you invade that easily, said Kazaru. You wanna bet? Kazaru looked over to see Luffy charging at him. You're the admiral sent to Sabradi. Yes, I was gonna ruin you there because the celestial dragons wanted it. But you were gone by the time I arrived. Straw hat Luffy. Kazaru said as he got ready to shoot Luffy with a light beam. S straw hat is dead. Shouted a prisoner. Luffy disappeared and reappeared in front of Kazaru, surprising the admiral. Luffy sent a pub into his gut while using his devil fruit, thus causing Kazaru to shoot off into the HQ. People's jaws were on the ground as Luffy didn't even bother to stop and realize what he just did. Luffy continued his charge while dodging and attacking Smiley Fry Marines. Straw Hat. He's high-spirited as usual. Oh yeah. I'll cut his shadow off and implant it into oars. Come on, zombie soldiers. Said Moria as he appeared on the battlefield and zombies started to pop out of the ground. Alright, zombie soldiers. Go ahead and capture Straw Hat. Uh, Moria. I don't want to deal with him now, said Luffy. Capture Straw Hat. He's the main suspect of the escape, shout marines as they also charged at Luffy. Kazaru appeared behind the group with blood on the sides of his mouth. Keep going. He's got to fight all these officers. I wonder how long he can hang on. Luffy was surrounded and continued to dodge and return attacks. Stay away, Luffy. I know that you know it. We're both pirates. We both sailed on the sea as we liked. I have my own adventures. I have my own friends. I want you too. Keep your hands off them. Go back, Luffy. Why did you come here? Shouted Ace. I beg you, Luffy. I don't want you to share my fate. This is all my fault. He thought. I'm, your brother. Quick flashback. We find a young Luffy and Ace with a bottle of sake. Did you know? We can become brothers if we exchange this cup of sake. From now on, we're brothers said Ace as they drank the sake. End flashback. Did he just say, I'm your brother? He's also a son of Roger. When Ace was born, both of his parents died. That's impossible. I don't give a damn about the rules of pirates, shouted Luffy. You hardhead, shouted Ace as Luffy destroyed the surrounding marines, but the zombies were still coming. Go, zombie soldiers, said Moria but his zombies were stopped by seawater launched by Jinbei. S. Seawater, if I remember correctly, Moria, your zombie soldiers can't take salt. Luffy Coon, let me handle them, said Jinbei. Great, what are you doing? Don't let this rookie take control of the war, shouted Senguko. That's when a giant wielding a giant bat appeared. Move out of the way. I'm gonna crush him up. And with that Luffy started dodging until he saw an opportunity. He's also a loose cannon. He grew up together with Ace as his stepbrother and he's the son of the revolutionary dragon, shouted Senguko. The revolutionary dragon, the worst criminal in history. Sounds very familiar, shouted Mr. Three who appeared next to Buggy. His daddy's got such a big name, shouted Buggy. He revealed it, shouted Helmepo. Luffy San, Siad Kobe. Luffy, said Hancock. I couldn't care less even if you were the devil's son, she thought. Kill him at any cost. Who cares? There's no need to hide it anyway. That label won't hurt him because Luffy is already a notorious outlaw. You brothers are foolish, said Garp. That's when Luffy saw his opening and took it. He jumped into the air and sent a punch cracking the air into the giant, breaking his ribs. This of course got cheers from the pirates. Ace, you can say whatever you want. I'm gonna save you even if it means death, shouted an enraged Luffy. That brat said Jozu. We feel the same way, shouted the pirates. We're Ace's family, too. We're gonna save him at any cost. Marco, we can't let that kid die, said Whitebeard. All right. As soon as Luffy landed, he was attacked by the giant Vice Admiral Ronz. Luffy immediately jumped up and grabbed his chin and slammed him into the ground. He then encased Ronz's head in sphere of energy, but before Luffy delivered the final blow, he locked eyes with Senguko. He gave a sadistic smile as he sent a shockwave onto Ronce's head. No matter who you send Senguko, I will defeat them, shouted Luffy. As soon as Luffy landed, 
He was attacked by the giant Vice Admiral Ronce. Luffy immediately jumped up and grabbed his chin and slammed him into the ground. He then encased Ronce's head in sphere of energy, but before Luffy delivered the final blow, he locked eyes with Senguko. He gave a sadistic smile as he sent a shockwave onto Ronce's head. No matter who you send Senguko, I will defeat them, shouted Luffy. All right here we go. If there are any errors I apologize. Sabra di Archipelago, people couldn't believe that Dragon had had a son. They mean that Dragon. Head office. I'm calling from Sabra di. We've got big news. Spread this all over the word, shouted numerous reporters. To some this was even bigger news than Whitebeard showing up. How did nobody know this? He is a devil. These were the shouts as they saw Luffy destroy two giant vice admirals back to back without breaking a sweat. Marineford, both marines and pirates just stared at Luffy as he stared down Senguko. Senguko was starting to get nervous. This rookie had just landed an attack on an admiral, and leveled two vice admiral giants. This boy was becoming a huge pain to deal with. Luffy smiled at Senguko before continuing forward. H he beat both giants. Awesome, straw hat. You beat the giants, shouted some of the pirates. Luffy was surrounded once again, only this time it was probably a good 5,000 marines. Don't let them advance any farther. Don't let the rookie get the best of you, shouted Senguko. Get them, shouted the marines as they charged. Sigh they never learn. Luffy swept his arm the air causing them be blown away. Meanwhile Whitebeard had ordered the pirates to take out the navy ships that were trying to trap them. All throughout the bay screams could be heard. Damn it. Get out of my way. Shouted Luffy as he continued to fight small fry marines. Senguko was now starting to sweat as he saw Luffy continue to advance. Luffy looked up and saw the troubled look on his face. What's wrong, Senguko? You're the ones who wanted this war. Don't start regretting it now. Shouted Luffy. Suddenly Luffy grabbed someone by their throat. He turned to face them which turned out to be Smoker. Listen here Smoker, I don't have time to play with you. So stay out of my way, shouted Luffy as he slammed Smoker into the ground, hard. Suddenly the marines started backing away. They're up to something. The question is what? Thought Luffy. That's when the pacifisters burst onto the battlefield. Oh you have got to be kidding, shouted Luffy as he looked back and saw how many of them there were. I'll let the others deal with them. That's when Hancock appeared next to Luffy. Ah, Hancock. What do I owe the pleasure? Hancock blushed when he said her name. I have your brother's handcuff key. Take it and hurry, she said as she gave him the key. Luffy hugged Hancock tighty and gave her a quick kiss before continuing. This of course caused her to faint, but luckily her snake caught her. Luffy would have caught her but he had already taken off. Meanwhile Whitebeard was just as suspicious as Luffy. I have a bad feeling about this situation, said Whitebeard as Squado appeared in front of him. Pops. Squado. I'm glad that you're alive, said Whitebeard. Yeah, barely. I see. I was calling for you a while ago. How is it at the Bayhead now? Your allies were beaten badly. I made it here because I found the way out luckily. Senguko has no mercy. He's using all the forces he has in order to defeat us, said Whitebeard. Pops. Did you notice what the navy was up to? I've known Senguko for a long time. I see. It's better for us if they're gonna attack from the rear. I'm gonna go forward, too. We gotta invade without stopping. I agree. There are 43 allied captains here and we are all in your debt beyond words. We risk our lives for the Whitebeard pirates. He said unsheathing his oversized katana. Thank you. But we are. I know. You are fighting to save a member of your family. The pirate, Whitebeard, won't give up on his family. Everybody followed you to this hell because you're that kind of person. I wish that. We were also. Members of your family. He said as he turned and stabbed Whitebeard through his stomach. Silence was all that could be heard. Luffy turned around and was shocked at what had happened, but turned quickly while clapping his hand sending out a shockwave. The shockwave met a green burst of energy which caused an explosion when the two forces met. That was awfully sneaky, Mihawk. Said Luffy as he looked up and saw Mihawk. You should stay focused on what's in front and not behind. Just as the two were about to charge at each other, Vista appeared in front of Mihawk. Ace's brother, you must continue. Ah, maybe another time Mihawk. Said Luffy as he took off again. Real quick and 
All the side fights that happen do happen I am just too tired to write them. So for example Ivankov vs Kuma, Whitebeard's fights, and so on aren't mentioned. This is focused on Luffy. So after making it to the wall, Luffy prepared to jump but was stopped when a huge wall rose out of the ground blocking him. Luffy ran and punched the wall only to put a dent into it. What the? That doesn't appear to be a normal wall, Luffy-san, said Jinbei as he appeared next to him. Luffy looked over and got an idea. Jinbei, I need you to do something. Other side of wall, we find the three admirals near the wall. Akainu was about to start melting the ice, when a water spout came over the wall. It disappeared in the air to reveal Luffy. Knock knock. He shouted as he slammed into the ground dispersing the admirals into buildings. Luffy got out of the crater he had created, and took off again. Only this time someone landed a punch on him sending him crashing into the wall. What the? Luffy started but his eyes widened when he saw who it was in front of him. Luffy, was all the man said as he looked at him. We find the three admirals near the wall. Akainu was about to start melting the ice, when a water spout came over the wall. It disappeared in the air to reveal Luffy. Knock knock. He shouted as he slammed into the ground dispersing the admirals into buildings. Luffy got out of the crater he had created, and took off again. Only this time someone landed a punch on him sending him crashing into the wall. What the? Luffy started but his eyes widened when he saw who it was in front of him. Luffy, was all the man said as he looked at him. Now let's get on to the end of the war. Sabra de Archipelago. People could only watch in horror as Luffy just kept taking out marines. What is he? Not even Whitebeard is brave enough to take on the admirals all at once. Someone must stop him. Yeah, there is still Garp the hero and Senguko. Surely one of them will stop him and the others. Meanwhile we find Rayleigh sitting alone watching the war. Luffy is changing the world right before your pathetic eyes, yet you don't know if it's for better or worse. Show them Luffy. Show the world what you're made of. He thought with a smile on his face. Over with Trafalgar law he had grown tired of watching this war. So he decided it was time they leave. Let's set sail, Beppo. He said to the white bear. Aye, aye, captain. Let's go to Marineford and see this in person. Thought Trafalgar law as he left with his crew. The other supernovas just watched as history was made. Marineford, Luffy stood up out of the rubble that was on top of him. He dusted himself off and smiled as he looked at the man who hit him. It looks like you finally came out to play, Grandpa. To those who guessed it was Garp congratulations. Luffy started walking forward. You got in a good hit, but you can try and beat me up after I save Ace. I can't allow you to do that, Luffy, said Garp. Luffy stopped and couldn't believe what he just heard. He narrowed his eyes and lost his uncaring demeanor. You would choose your job over family. How could you? First him a marine vice admiral and as such it is my obligation to stop all threats. Even if I don't want to. I tried to get you two to follow the right path, but no you both wanted to be pirates. This is the result of your actions, so you have forced my hand. As much as I hate to do this. The only way you're getting to ace is if you kill me. Luffy's eyes widened when he heard his grandfather say that. However he quickly composed himself. Luffy shot off towards Garp who could still follow his movements. If I have to get by you to get to ace so be it. Luffy was in striking range when he sent out a harky punch. Garp threw a punch that deliberately missed Luffy or so Luffy thought. However he was shocked when his grandfather didn't move to block or move out of the way. This allowed for a direct hit to his face sending him crashing into the buildings of Marineford. Now Senguko was really nervous. He was the only real threat standing in the way of the pirates. Luffy didn't have time to dwell on why his grandfather allowed him to punch him. He took off for the scaffolding with pretty much a clear path. After about a minute of running, he reached the scaffolding. To hell with climbing this thing, thought Luffy as he punched the base of the scaffolding, causing it to fall. The marines started to OPED fire with cannons causing the scaffolding to catch on fire. Luffy didn't care and jumped straight to ace. Luffy didn't say anything, but moved to place the key he received from Hancock. However just as the key was almost in, Senguko sent a beam breaking it in two. Bastard, thought the brothers as they continued to fall. That's when Luffy noticed that one of the executioners was Mr. Three. He snuck in when the marines weren't looking. Oi, Mr. Three, use your devil fruit and create a key. Mr. Three didn't have time to argue, 
so he obliged and created a wax key and tossed it to Luffy. Luffy placed the key in the hole and turned it. It wasn't a moment too soon for just as he released Ace they hit the ground. However being the bad asses that they are, they weren't hurt. He did it. He freed Ace. The shouts of the pirates could be heard from everywhere. I told you I would save you, Ace, said Luffy. Ace just smiled at his little brother. Luffy looked at Senguko before he changed into his Buddha form. He sent a beam at Luffy who stopped it with a punch. Luffy disappeared and reappeared right in front of Senguko's face. You will not get away. Kiss my ass, Senguko. With that Luffy sent a quake punch right into Senguko's face. This of course sent Senguko crashing into the ground, giving Luffy and Ace a chance to run. The two brothers took off for the pirates, fighting as if they had rehearsed their moves as they fought in sync without even thinking about it. Let's hurry, Luffy. We gotta get out of this place, said Ace. All right, they make a perfect pair, said Vista as he watched the brothers fight. Make room for them to run, shouted Haruta, the 12th Division commander. The Marines still tried to stop them even after getting their asses handed to them. Execute, fire fist, and straw hat. Damn it. How many times do I have to repeat myself? Stay out of my way, shouted Luffy as the two took out the charging Marines. However, as they took off again only for Aokiji to block their path. I hope you aren't upset about me beating you, said Luffy with a grin. There's no tomorrow for you. You think you can escape? You may have taken us by surprise before, but you will not escape. Ice block. Pheasant beak. He shouted as a huge ice pheasant came charging at Luffy and Ace. I'll take him, Luffy. Flame mirror. The two attacks clashed only for Aces to melt Aokiji. Think like when Ace and Blackbeard fought. Aokiji San's ice was instantly vaporized, said startled Marines. He's our second division commander. Of course, he's capable of that, said Vista as he charged forward to reach the brothers. Meanwhile Buggy was furious that Luffy stole the audience away from him. That damn straw hat, shouted Buggy. That kid has been kicking marine asses left and right. Who would have thought he was so strong? Stop being impressed, you boneheads, shouted Buggy as he had heard enough praise for Luffy. But they aren't important, back to the action. Even an admiral's power is useless against them. How can we fight them? said marines as they started to back away. However they backed into a kainu who had reappeared on the battlefield. Don't lose your head, we won't let them get away from here, said a kainu, as if he has a chance. Closing parenthesis. Don't be afraid. Let's beat them, shouted marines as they charged. However they were stopped when a paddle ship Moby Dick came rolling through the plaza. Heads up, everyone, their ship is moving. Don't get close. It's running on the ground with its paddles. On board was Squado and his pirates. Squado. The world spider spider. Shouted the pirates. Pops, everyone, run. Leave the war to us. Shouted Squado. Those fools. Said Whitebeard. Don't be stupid, Squado. Obviously, you have a death wish. Of course, I have. What I did to Pops was horrible. Even if this doesn't make amends for it, I can't let things go like this. Everybody, take ace and run, shouted Squado. Damn Squado, that's not the smart way to do it. Hey, hurry up and uncuff me, said Marco as he was trying to recover from the shots by Kazaru. Yes everyone was injured just like in the cannon. This is Luffy-centric so it has only been focused on him, in case you couldn't tell. You guys, are you all ready? Advance, shouted Squado. However, the entire ship was stopped with one hand by Whitebeard. Pops, W with just one hand. He stopped the ship, shouted a marine. Can't you understand how ungrateful it is for a child to die before his parent, Squado? Don't get too confident. That little stab wound that you created doesn't really jeopardize my life. Everybody has his own duration of life, shouted an injured whitebeard as he turned back to Marineford. We accomplished our goal here. There's no need to stay here anymore. Listen carefully, whitebeard pirates. I'm gonna give you an order from the captain one last time. What do you mean, last? Wait, Pops, that's too sad. I don't wanna hear such thing. Let's go back to the new world together. All of you and I will split up from here. Everyone, survive at any cost and go back to the new world safely. I'm a remnant from the old times. There is no ship that can bear me in the new era. Go, you guys, shouted Whitebeard. 
Alright I am going to skip to where Ace and Akainu meet. Keep going. We have to reach the ships. Ace was running next to Luffy, when Squelch Luffy stopped dead in his tracks and turned around. He looked back to see magma fist sticking out of Ace's chest. Luffy dove to catch him when Akainu pulled his fist out. Ace! Ha! Huh, that's what happens when you think you've won. Luffy just supported Ace from hitting the ground. He looked at his hand to see it was covered in blood. Ace, you need to get treated right away. I'm sorry, Luffy. In order to save me, you fought through hell but I couldn't make it all the way. I'm sorry. With that Ace slid to the ground with a smile on his face. Luffy never noticed that there was a very small amount of Vivra cards still left intact. Luffy stood and stared at his brother's form while Whitebeard went and fought the other two admirals. I'm going to kill you, Akainu, Luffy said in a calm voice. Akainu sent another magma punch at Luffy, but Luffy ducked underneath it and grabbed him by the throat. Luffy started slamming Akainu into the ground over and over again. When he stopped they were in five foot deep crater, but Luffy wasn't finished yet. He encased Akainu's head in energy and sent a shockwave through his head. Luffy looked up to see that Blackbeard had arrived at Marineford and had just finished off Whitebeard. Ha 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 ha. I will kill you all, said Luffy as he gripped the air and swiped downwards, causing Marineford to start to split apart. Luffy wasn't gonna collapse until he got back at Blackbeard, so he took off for him. As soon as he was close enough he struck only for Blackbeard to grab his arm. Ha ha ha. What will you do now that I have cancelled out your power? Oh no, what will I do now? Oh I know, this. With that Luffy used a hockey punch to Blackbeard's face, sending him to the ground. Luffy never noticed Ace being taken away by doctors. Alright, we're here. This is Grove 41. This is where we're dropping anchor. Said Hachi as the thousand sunny anchored. I wanted to give them a different ship but I couldn't think of one. Alright everyone, don't forget the number here. Like I said earlier. All of the islands are connected via bridges. So if you remember the number, you won't get lost. Finished Hachi as everyone was now on the ground. Even then, there is one guy who'll get lost, right? Said Usopp. There is. Said Chopper as they both looked at Zoro. Ha, huh, what? Asked Zoro. Robin had been looking around at the soap bubbles. Those soap bubbles really are mysterious. How do they work? The roots of these Yarakiman mangroves secret a unique kind of resin said the orange starfish papug. Oh, no. This is all sticky, said Robin as she placed her hand on the ground getting the secretion on her hand before wiping it off on Usopp. Don't wipe it off, shouted Usopp. So, when the trees breath out, the resin is blown out as well, and forms these soap bubbles, said Papug as he pointed to a new bubble that just appeared from the ground. I see, so that's why they're all floating into the sky, said Chopper. Sir all this is actually natural? Asked Luffy looking around. Oi! Everyone looked up to see Usopp up on one of the bubbles. Ha! Huh. Oi! Usopp! When did you get up there? Shouted Luffy. I can see an amusement park over there. Let's go! Let's ride the ferris wheel! Shouted Usopp as he pointed in the direction of the park. An amusement park? Asked Chopper. That's the Sabradi Park. How nice! The ferris wheel! Riding on that is my dream! said the mermaid Kami. Your dream? Why can't you ride it? asked Chopper. Don't be ridiculous. You can't do that, Kami, shouted Papug. Yeah, I know, said Kami as she scooted off moping. I want to ride T2, but I guess I can't, said Chopper as Usopp fell to the ground seeing as his bubble had popped. By the way, Hachi, what's our goal on this island? You said something about coating for the ship earlier, didn't you? asked Nami. We have to find a coating mechanic, and have him coat your ship with this resin. Simply put, that will enable your ship to travel under the sea, said Hachi. Seriously? asked Frankie. That's the only way humans can reach Fishman Island. However, if you get an amateur to do it, the ship, and the humans riding it, would be crushed by the water pressure. I know one mechanic who's trustworthy, so I'm gonna take you to him, said Hachi. Octopus San, you are such a nice fellow for helping us so much. Ah, he is a nice octopus, said the skeleton brook. In exchange, I'd like you to make just a single promise to me, said Hachi. Sure, what is it? asked Luffy. Once we enter the city, we might run into the world nobles walking around there. World nobles, who are they? 
asked Chopper. The citizens of the Holy Land, Mariajoa, said Robin. And, what about them? asked Luffy. No matter what might happen in the city, I want you to promise me that you won't lay a hand on the world nobles, said Hachi in a serious but almost desperate voice. No matter what, asked a wide-eyed Nami. What do you, started Sanji. Got it. Even if someone were to be killed, right before your very eyes, just pretend you didn't see anything. I'll say it one more time. Just pretend you didn't see anything, said Hachi. Luffy nodded even though he didn't want to. Frankie, Usopp, Sanji stay with ship while we go into town, said Luffy. Sure we need to refill the cola anyway. We used up all our cola in that battle back there. Taking care of the ship is my job, said Frankie in a proud voice. I will help you, said Usopp as the others went to town leaving the three behind. However, Zoro had stayed behind as well before he took off. Oi, Zoro, shouted Usopp. Hello, Zoro-kun, shouted Sanji. Where are you going, all by yourself? They asked together. Zoro heard them and turned around. For a walk. So what? Stop it, shouted Usopp. Don't, you'll get lost, damn it. This is an archipelago, you know. We won't be able to find you, shouted Sanji. Like I'd get lost. Who'd get lost on an island like this, where it's so easy to find your way? Each of the trees have a number on them, right? Even a kid with the worst sense of direction would be able to find his way, said an irritated Zorro. You'd thought that far ahead? Asked Usopp. I didn't think of that. Sorry. Be careful, said Sanji as they waved. Don't forget to ask for directions. Don't believe in yourself. They're going way overboard. As long as I don't forget the number on this tree. Number one, right? He didn't see the four because it was being blocked by a soap bubble. Why do they keep looking down on me? No way anyone would get lost around here. I can't believe those guys, he said as he walked off. With Luffy and the others, the group was on their way to the nearest town. The world nobles are also known as the Celestial Dragons. They are really arrogant, and wear a mask so they don't have to breath the same air as everyone else. No matter what, don't try to oppose those guys. I need you to promise that, said Hachi who had donned a large coat with the number 8 and 2 bandages crossed on his forehead. This was directed at Luffy. Sure, and there are several other things to look out for. Like I said earlier, this island is where everyone who wants to go to the new world, gathers. There are plenty of big name pirates like yourselves. And then there are marines and bounty hunters trying to catch them. Also, even if pirates are taken away by slave traders, the law won't protect them. If you do anything to get yourselves noticed, they'll go after you instantly, so be careful. The marines around here are not to be taken lightly. These waters are close to the navy HQ, after all. All the bounty hunters around here are on a totally different level as well. And there's one more thing. But before Hachi could finish he was interrupted by a careless Luffy. What's that? You're too concerned about stuff. By the way, why are there bandages on your forehead? Huh? Oh, don't worry about it. Kami and I are not a mermaid and a fisherman, okay? While we're here, please pretend that we're ordinary people. Huh? Why? It's just easier like that. We should follow the customs of the culture around here, Luffy. Let's just do as the octopus told us to, said Robin after looking at Kami and Hachi. Oh yeah. Hachi, why is it the bubbles pop at a certain point in the air? They pop because they leave the Sabra de Archipelago's unique atmosphere. So that's why Usopp fell. This place has a special, unique climate specifically suited to the Yarakim and mangroves. But once you leave the climate, the soap bubbles won't be strong enough to stay whole. Is that so? Then, that means you can only ride the soap bubbles. For as long as you stay on the island, doesn't it? Asked Robin. As they continued through the town they had reached, they could hear the whispers from the people around them. Isn't that? Yeah that's them. So that's the famous Captain Monkey D. Luffy. I can't believe he finally showed up. We need to report this to the captains. After walking some more they found themselves in Grove 35. Grove 35. There are lots of hotels here, aren't there? Said Robin looking around at all the hotels. It's the living quarters for those waiting for permission to pass through Mariajoa. Said Hachi. It's really easy to make these hotels. See that over there? Asked Papag as he pointed over to some workers. They just coat those huge soap bubbles in a special alloy, and the foundation is done. That's how they make those round buildings. Really? Robin, 
Isn't that a shopping mall? Shouted Nami as the two took off for Grove 30. We'll leave the coating to you guys. Shouted Nami as they left. Where are we going? Asked Chopper. To Grove 31. We've still got a long way to go. We're going now. Said Hachi as they took off for Grove 31. After walking for about half an hour they arrived at Grove 31, only to see a crowd of people surrounding a man trying to get a collar off from around his neck. Please release me. Please, please, please get this off me. I'm, I'm, I'm going back home. I'm begging you. Hey, I'm asking you a favor here. Anyone's fine. An axe. A saw. Anything will do. Just give me something. I just want to get this off my neck. I won't hurt anyone but no one moved to help him. I've given up on going to the new world. I've got a wife and a child back home. I'm begging you. Please lend me a hand. I wanna go home. Last time I saw my kid, he was still a baby. He still doesn't even know what I look like. I'm begging you. I wanna go home. Hey, please. Please help me. The man was practically in tears, but still no one moved to help him. Just as Luffy was about to help the man, he was stopped by Hachi. Don't get involved. He's probably a pirate who was caught by kidnappers and sold as a slave. His owner probably brought him to this island, and he made a run for it, even though he should know that he can't escape. That's when the man's collar started ticking causing the crowd to back up even more. W what's that sound? Asked Chopper. Damn. This ring. If I could just get off my neck. Damn it. No. Stop. Please stop. Hey. Damn it all to hell. That's when the collar exploded causing the man to fall to the ground with grave injuries. Slaves always have those chains attached to their necks. If they try to take them off or run away, they'll explode, said Hachi. It's a slave who tried to run away. Get away. Don't get involved with him. These were the shouts that came from the crowd. L look at that. We have to help him, said Brooke. Idiot. You promised to not get involved, no matter what, right, said Papug. What's with this city? shouted Chopper. Hacken, what are we going to do? The celestial dragons are nearby, said Kami who had been disguised so no one would recognize that she was a mermaid. It's all right. Calm down, Kami. That's when those stupid ass celestial dragons showed up, causing everyone to bow. Those must be the celestial dragons, said Luffy before Hachi forced him to bow. You have to bow down. Why? No matter what, don't look them in the eyes. That's when their little dog walked over to the man and pissed on him. My, how vulgar, so, said Saint Shalulia as she walked over to the man with her father next to her. Oh no, father, yet another one has been broken. Did you make sure to give his tranquilizer every day? Asked Saint Roswald. Why, yes, I did. However, it appears that it does not work on fools like this one. Would you please buy me a new one? Your disciplining skills are truly terrible. You keep destroying my captain collection, one after another. This one is certainly useless. HMPH. She said as she kicked him. So you meet your end amidst crying families and grown men. You are just a mere human. She said as she continued to kick the man. He can't even move anymore. Said Luffy. That's when she stopped kicking him, and pulled out a pistol. You disgust me. And with that fired two shots into the man. As they started to leave you could hear her arrogant ass. I would like a giant slave next. You should start with a human child. But I detest the weak. And with that, they left. Marines appeared out of nowhere with a stretcher and carried the man off. It's the Marines. We should get away from here. After they left they sat down on a route. How about some tea? It will help calm you down. Said Brooke who offered the cup to Kami, but she shook her head. I feel terrible. Think the guy will be alright? Asked Chopper. He's a pirate, so even if they save him, he'll just be sent to prison, said Hachi. That pirate should be able to beat that old guy and the woman, right? Why? asked Chopper. If you hurt one of the celestial dragons, an admiral from Navy HQ and a fleet of battleships will come here, said Papug. An admiral? Aokiji? Luffy asked now interested in the conversation. It could be a Kainu or Kazaru. There's no way to know who'd show up. The HQ is right next to us, after all, said Papug. What makes those guys so special? Asked Chopper. Those guys are descendants of the creators, the creators. 800 years ago, 
a group of 20 kings formed the organization known as the World Government. The Celestial Dragons are their descendants. And over the course of the years, they've come to abuse their incredible influence. The Celestial Dragons, said Luffy with a grin. They never noticed the group of bounty hunters that were up on a much higher route. It's him. Yeah, no mistaking it. It's Straw Hat Luffy. He's worth over 400 million belly. They took off to attack Luffy. Luffy sensed them and sidestepped a sword after waiting for them to get closer before turning and punching the man in the face. Meanwhile Brooke took off running around the group at high speeds. What's with this damn skeleton? I'll exercise you. And the man swung his sword only for Brooke to jump in the air and land in the middle of the group as he pulled out his sword. He just dodged and slashed at those who were stupid enough to attack. Chopper just clotheslined three bounty hunters. Over with Luffy, the bounty hunters were doing worse. They couldn't even touch him, and he wasn't even trying. He's as fast as a monkey. Be careful. Luffy leaned backwards to dodge two horizontal slashes before coming back up knocking the two out with punches to the face. He then jumped backwards, dodging a downward strike. Luffy then kicked the man sending him into the roots. Sigh this would have been easier if I could use me devil fruit, but I don't want to destroy this island so I had to take you on one by one. Damn. How can all of them be so strong? In that case, I'll take that woman as a hostage, said a man as he moved for Kami. As he got close Kami's shoe fell off revealing part of her tail. No way, thought some of the bounty hunters. Oh, damn it, Kami, said Hachi. Luffy wasn't gonna have any of that and sent a quake punch to his gut effectively killing him. All right, you okay? Sorry for the trouble, straw hat, said Hachi. Thank you, Luffy Chin, said Kami. It's fine. So you guys got everyone else right? Yes, said Brooke. You people truly are amazing, said Hachi as they continued on to their destination. No matter how many of M show up, I wouldn't lose to someone like that, said Luffy. They never noticed some of the bounty hunters stare at Kami and left. But, what was that? So many bounty hunters suddenly showed up, said Brooke. That was the third group to attack us, said Chopper. That's when they looked around, there are fewer people around, and the shops and cities feel rather suspicious. It doesn't seem like the kind of place where we would find a coating mechanic, said Chopper. This archipelago is huge, so there are places where the government's eyes can't reach. The marines won't go anywhere near this place. Have a look at this, said Hatchie as he handed a piece of paper to Brooke. A map, is it? It classifies the groves in groups of ten, based on their specific traits. Nothing is set in stone, but for the most part, it's accurate. For example, the places we've been to so far. The groves in the 40s, where your ship is docked, is the tourist area, where there are lots of souvenir shops and things like that. And if you continue to the 30s, you'll reach the amusement area, where the Sabradi Park is located, said Hachi. Then, the 60s are the Navy's headquarters, and the main entrance, correct? asked Brooke. Yeah, the 60s are the one part of this place we shouldn't go to. Then, what's this area here? asked Chopper. This? This is Grove 16. Groves 1 to 29 are more or less a lawless zone. That's why there are so many bounty hunters around, said Hachi. Couldn't you have said that sooner? If you had, you could have taken Sanji or Zoro instead of me, shouted Chopper. It's fine now. Our destination, Grove 13, is next. Chopper Chin, Skeleton Chin, you were both really strong and cool. After walking a bit more they reached Grove 13. Well then, we're here. We finally made it here said Chopper. It seems that the store is on the top of that route. Wonder if it's still open. It's been ten years after all, said Hachi as he looked at the store. Say, is this coating mechanic a fishman, too? asked a curious Luffy. Oh, Papug and I haven't met him before. We've heard that he's quite amazing, though, said Kami. Oh, really? Well, I guess we'll know once we meet him. As they got to the front of the store they read the sign. Shaki's ripoff bar. Hachi. This place seems like a total ripoff, said Papug. That mechanic isn't some sort of monster, is he? asked Chopper. It's fine. They're nice people. I've known them since I was a kid. Seems they're open, said Hachi as he read the sign on the door and walked in. Rayleigh, Shaki. Shaki's ripoff bar. They walked in to see a woman with a cigarette, holding a bloody man and another laying on the floor. Welcome. What can I do for you? 
asked the woman before she looked to see Hachi. Oh, my. Could it be, Hakan? Long time, no see. Sorry, it's been so long, Shaki. That's right. It's been at least ten years, hasn't it? Just sit down and wait. I've got to finish extorting the money out of these boys here. Take your time, said Hachi as they went and sat down. I'll finish it quickly, said Shaki as she quickly dispatched the two men outside before she turned back to the group. Is that so? You quit being a pirate, Hakan? She asked after Hachi told her about what he was up to. Plenty of things happened. Well, good for you. Honesty is the best way to go, after all. By the way, it's not often that you see a mermaid above the sea. Kami Chan, are you Hakan's girlfriend? This caused Kami to freak out. NN no way, I, I couldn't become Hakan's BBB bride. You're overreacting, said Papug. She works with me at the takoyaki stand. Oh, is that it? That's right. Would you like something to drink? Shaki San, these beans are quite tasty, said Brooke who was eating some beans that were sitting on the counter. Brooke, she's gonna rip you off, shouted Chopper. It's okay, I don't mind. Well, then, I'll give you something good. Here, she said handing Chopper some cotton candy. Cotton candy, shouted Chopper with stars in his eyes. It's great. Right, it'll cost you 100,000 belly. This caused Chopper to start crying. I, I, don't have that much. Shaki placed a hand on Chopper's head. Sorry, it was a joke. I won't ask for payment from Hakan's friends. How do you know what Chopper's favorite food was? Asked Luffy. You're Monkey Chan's crew, right? I see you know of me. Of course, you're the crew everyone talks about. I'm pretty well informed. Really, Luffy Chin, you're famous. Asked Kami. Though, I didn't know you had a skeleton in your crew, or that a living skeleton existed, for that matter, said Shaki as she leaned over towards Brooke. Oh, I should have introduced myself sooner. I am, Dead Bones, Brooke. It is a pleasure to meet you. The pleasure's all mine. Oh, you've got some food stuck there, said Shaki as she grabbed the bean on Brooke's cheek and ate it. Shaki san, said a red Brooke as the top of his skull opened to let smoke out. What a nice person. What color are your panties? Well, I'm sure today's were. Started Shaki but was interrupted by Kami. Ah, you can't tell him. That is incredible. I cannot stop my nosebleed, though I have no nose. I read an article about you guys. About the Eni's lobby incident. How much of it is true? Is it true that you picked a fight with the government? Whatever. It's too much trouble to tell you. Not gonna brag. What a big shot. Come to think of it, your name is the same as that Marine, Garp, right? Yeah. He's my grandpa. I thought so. I used to be chased around by him all the time. Shaki used to be a pirate, said Hachi. Really? I gave up about 40 years ago, though, these days, I think it's fun supporting rookies like yourselves. By the way, Shaki. Started Hachi. No need to say it. I know, all of it. The reason why you and Kami Chan came here, was to help Monkey Chan and his crew get their ship coated, right? In other words, you've got a job for Rayleigh, right? That's right, said Hachi. But, he isn't here. Huh. The mechanic isn't around. We want to go to Fishman Island, said Brooke. Well, there's no way he'd leave this archipelago, so. How about looking for him in the bars and gambling houses? Then, we'll just wait until he comes back, said Luffy. That's right. He'll be back eventually. He's been gone for half a year, though. Half a year? Shouted Chopper and Brooke. I'm sure he's found girlfriends, and thus found places to sleep, so I am not exactly worried about his health. I suppose it's just how ex-pirates are. Once they leave, they won't return for a long time. But this is quite a problem. If he isn't here, I suppose we have no choice but to look for him. Do you have any idea where we should start? Asked Brooke. Let's see. He's probably somewhere between Grove 1 and 29. Grove 1 to 29, that means. The lawless zone, said a scared chopper. He's quite notorious, so he can't lower his guard when there are marines around. And then, if he's not there, he also likes going to the Sabradi Park. The amusement park, eh? All right, we will start there. The amusement park, shouted Kami, Chopper, and Brooke. Anyway, whenever you go to look for him, be careful. According to my information, now that you've arrived, there should be. 
Twelve people on the Sabra di Archipelago with bounty exceeding 100 million belly. Twelve people exceeding 100 million belly, asked Chopper. And that should bother me because, asked Luffy. Just because you have the largest bounty out of all of them and two other members are in your crew doesn't mean that they won't come after you Luffy-chan. I mean I understand just how dangerous you have to be, but your Nakama aren't nearly as strong as you, said a slightly worried Shaki. Luffy stopped rocking and steadied his chair, then looked up with look that sent chills up everyone's spine. I dare them to try something. Anyway, not counting Monkey-chan, Roronoa-chan, and Sanji-chan, there are nine others. When you entered the Grand Line, there were seven paths you could take, and you chose one of them, and have been following the log on that path ever since, right? Yeah. Of course, there were also people who chose one of the other six routes. And made it through all sorts of trouble to get here, just like yourselves. No matter what route you take, each of them eventually leads to the Red Line, and to get past that well, everyone comes to this archipelago. Understand, though it's pretty amazing that all of the world's rookies managed to show their faces here at the same time. In particular, there's Kid, Luffy, Hawkins, Drake, and Law. These names have been decorating the newspapers for some time now. I haven't heard of M, said Luffy. Knowledge is power. You should at least learn the names of your rivals. If we're going by bounty value you're number one among them. There is, Mad Monk, Yuruj captain of the fallen monk pirates from Sky Island with a bounty of 108 million. Then there is Sanji Chan with a 110 million bounty, followed by Zoro Chan with a 120 million bounty, both of course from East Blue. Then there is Capone, Gang, Bege captain of the fire tank pirates with a bounty of 138 million, he is from West Blue. After that there is, the glutton, Jewelry Bonnie Captain of the Bonnie Pirates with a bounty of 140 million from South Blue. Then comes a man by the name of Killer a Pirate from the Kid Pirates with a bounty of 162 million from South Blue. Then we have, Roar of the Sea, Scratchman Apu Captain of the On Air Pirates with a bounty of 198 million from the Grand Line. Next up there is the, Surgeon of Death, Trafalgar Law Captain and Doctor of the Heart Pirates with a bounty of 200 million from North Blue. After him, there is, Red Flag, ex-Drake Captain of the Drake Pirates and former Marine Rear Admiral, with a bounty of 222 million from North Blue. Next there is, Magician, Basil Hawkins Captain of the Hawkins Pirates with a bounty of 249 million from North Blue. Then there is the one with the closest bounty to Luffy-chan, he is Eustace, Captain, Kid with a bounty of 315 million Captain of the Kid Pirates from South Blue. And last but not least we have, Straw Hat, Monkey D. Luffy with a bounty of 435 million, captain of the Straw Hat Pirates and of course from East Blue. All of the pirate crews that entered the Grand Line, have been reduced to an easily countable number. The Grand Line is like a huge survival tournament. Regardless of which path they traveled, the ones that survived this far are truly the elites. Among them, there might be one, who will become a huge leading figure for the next generation of pirates. Regardless, even the new world won't remain unfazed if so many big shot rookies enter at once. Also, the reason why Captain Kidd, Bounty is the closest to you, is because his crew has badly injured civilians. Not too cute, right? Because of that, I'm wholeheartedly cheering for your crew, Monkey Chan, said Shaki. Luffy shrugged, they weren't his concern, unless they caused trouble. After thinking about what to do, Luffy came to a decision. Well, for now. I think I'll just enjoy myself. But if there are so many in town, I'm kinda worried. About the old mechanic. You don't have to worry about my people. He's a hundred times stronger than him, after all. The group started to leave for the amusement park. Well, be careful then. I should tell you, of course, the Navy already knows, that there are so many high-level rookies gathered in this archipelago, said Shaki. That is bad. Then, they could come at us at any time, said Brooke. Oh, that shouldn't be a problem. I wonder if this will speed up the meeting rookies. Right now, the Navy HQ is so busy with something else, that they don't have the time to worry about you. Or at least, I assume so. As long as no huge problems pop up on the archipelago, the Navy shouldn't send any major force to deal with you. So in short, just take care not to start any kind of uproar all right? Asked a smiling Shaki. So that's how it is. 
Not a problem. We're off to look for the old mechanic, said Luffy as they left for the amusement park. After walking for about 10 minutes they arrived at the Sabaradi Park. We've reached Sabaradi Park, said Luffy slightly excited. Just because you're super strong doesn't mean you can't have a little fun. Closing parenthesis. Yay, shouted everyone. It looks fun, said Luffy with a grin. You're not even gonna look for the old guy, are you? Shouted Papug. Relax, Shaki said the old mechanic likes it here. But that was only if he wasn't in the lawless zone. The Ferris wheel. This is the first time I've been this close to it. Shouted Kami with hearts in her eyes. Then let's go, said Luffy. Kami, you can't go in there. No way I'd let you go in there, shouted Papag, but they had already started in. They rode the roller coaster, merry-go-round, teacups, and now we find them on the Ferris wheel. It's fun to act like a kid every now and then. Wow, we're so high up. Ah, there's an ice cream stand down there. Everyone looks so small. Oh, it's the sea. Luffy Chin, it's the sea, said Kami looking out from the top. Yeah, awesome, amazing. I can see it all from here, said Kami with tears in her eyes. You're so happy that you're crying. Yes, because this has been my dream since I was a child. This is the first time I've been to a place as high as this. I'll remember it for the rest of my life. Thank you. Hakan and Papag let me come here because you guys are so strong. After they had gotten off, they went and got some food. They never noticed the shady bear following them. Earlier, we find two survivors from the bounty hunters, back at their hideout. Who'd have thought they were this strong? Yeah, that's a problem, huh? But are you sure about this? Yeah, Peterman San. That woman who was with Straw Hat Luffy and the others was probably a mermaid. When I remember what I saw, the woman's shoe fell off at one point, and there wasn't a foot, but a fin. Really now, but it'll be a problem as long as she's with those strong guys, huh? That being said, a mermaid on land gives us a huge chance. After all, you can't catch him underwater. Thanks a lot for telling me, you guys. As a reward, you can have 10% of the fee we fetch for her, all right. Said Peterman. Ah, if possible, could we have 20%? Ha, huh, no. 10% is enough. Thanks a lot. Present. Kami, wait here for a minute, okay. Said Papug. Sure. You'll pick out something tasty for me too, right? The group was at a food stand with their backs turned. That's when Peterman made his move. Thousand Sunny, Sanji, Usopp, and Frankie were about to have some tea, when the transponder snail started ringing in the cabin. Oh. Maybe that's from Nami-san said Sanji as he answered it. H.I., Nami S.W.A. Hello, it's me. It's Chopper. Um, there were so many different kinds of ice cream. We got reckless. Hey, what are you so upset about? Sanji, something terrible just happened. What do we do? You're not making any sense. Calm down and tell me what happened. Kami has been. Usopp and Frankie walked in. What's P, Sanji? Asked Usopp. Kami has been kidnapped. What did you say? Asked Sanji. It's probably the team of slave traders who did it. I don't understand the reason, but mermen and fishmen get sold off at the market, regardless of whether they've actually done anything. They took Kami away, and if she ends up being a slave for the rest of her life, it'll be our fault. There are so many human shops on the archipelago, so we have no idea where they're taking her. And we don't even know who took her. The archipelago is too big, but if everyone lends a hand, then maybe, shouted Chopper. Tell me where you guys are right now. We'll meet up there, so don't move. Ha! Huh. But, we'll contact a guy who's a pro at this stuff. I'll call the flying fish riders. With that Sanji made the call. After about 10 minutes he started to get frustrated. Damn, they're late, young masters, was the shout that was heard. They've come, ha! Huh. Yahoo it's me, handsome. No, that's wrong. It's Duval. Greetings, Master Blackleg. You're late, flying fish riders. Wait a minute, young master. We are the rosy life riders. I don't care what you call yourselves. You're annoying. Anyway, a mermaid was kidnapped. That's why we contacted you, said Sanji. Ha, huh, so the slave traders showed up, ha, huh, said Duval. Those guys are unbelievable, shouted the riders. Hey, weren't you slave traders too? shouted Usopp. 
There are so many places they could have gone to, so. You guys, give us a hand, said Frankie. Why, of course. Thank you for your orders, said Duval. Will we really be all right with these guys? Asked Usopp. But first, the handsome me just went to a city where I could find some women. Huh? Asked the three straw hats. Eh, hey, I'm just remembering unimportant events. We just have to find that mermaid before she's sold, right? That's right. You guys should know a thing or two about the Sabra di Archipelago, right? Asked Sanji. Of course. We know the seas around here like our own backyard. Just think of it as having gotten on a really big ship. Now, get on. Said one of the riders. So we are going on this flying fish? Asked Usopp as he jumped on one of the fish. Yes, friend. I'm counting on you. Said Frankie as he sat down on one of the fish. Gotcha. So, how are we gonna look for them? Asked Sanji. Young master, people in this business have their own way of doing things. We already have various information on the various slave trader teams. First off, we'll pick up the straw hats who are spread all over the Sabra di Archipelago. And at the same time, we'll also track down the slave traders who took that mermaid. Let's get going, you guys, shouted Duval as Sanji rode with him. Yeah, with that cheer, the flying fish took to the air in search. Okay, we're coming to save you right now, Kami Chan. Hey, Duval, let's go faster, shouted Sanji since they were going so slow. Young master, this is as fast as Motobaro can go. All right, well then, we'll go as fast as we can. What? This is his top speed. Sabra di Park, Chopper was pacing back and forth since Luffy, Papag, and Hachi took off to find Kami. Is this really okay? In times like this, it's dangerous for us to get separated, right? Brooke. He looked over to see Brooke drinking tea. You're too relaxed. I was really shocked. Kami was kidnapped, you know. If she gets sold, she'll end up being a slave for the rest of her life. Chopper San. Sanji San was very specific as to what we should do next. No matter how we spend it, we will still be waiting for a certain amount of time, said Brooke. I see. Frantically rushing about won't gain us anything. If we have to wait anyway, should we not relax while waiting? That's when Usopp dropped from the flying fish he was on. Hey, you two, why are you so relaxed? Ah, Usopp San has come to pick us up. Luffy and the others went off somewhere. But we've been waiting right here like we were supposed to, peacefully. Usopp punched them over the head before getting on the flying fishes. Let's go. We're initiating our great plan to save Kami, shouted Usopp. Yes, it's time to give it our best. Let's go, shouted Brooke. We, we got yelled at, Brooke, said a crying chopper. Ashamed. I am slightly ashamed, said Brooke. Split up and keep going. Investigate all the slave trading organizations, find out who did it. And don't forget to pick up the remaining straw hats, came the voice form a transponder snail. Understood. We're splitting up. With that the group split up. All right. Hurry up, rosy life riders. There's not a minute to lose, came the voice of Duval. With Luffy, Papag and Hachi, the three had just left one of the slave traders' store. They were now walking through a town calling out to Kami. Kami, shouted Papag and Hachi. The crowd started whispering among themselves. Hey, look at that. That straw hat Luffy from East Blue. That's him, huh? We don't know if she's been sold yet. If only we Neef who took her, at least said Hachi. Hey, there's no need to be so depressed. We'll find Kami, said Luffy. Damn it. This is my fault. I knew that the amusement park is the best spot for slave traders. And how much they'd want to capture a mermaid. It's my fault. It's because I let her go to the amusement park, said a crying papug. It was fine to bring her to the amusement park, wasn't it? asked Luffy. No, it wasn't. Actually, Merman and fishmen shouldn't even be on this island in the first place. But, Hachi just wanted to help you guys out no matter what. Papug. Don't say any more. Shouted Hachi. What's he talking about? Why can't you guys be on this island? Well, you see. Started Hachi. Kami and Hachi's enemies here aren't just the slave traders. Every single human living on this archipelago is an enemy. Nami and Robin. Nami and Robin had finished up shopping. And now Robin was explaining history to Nami. 200 years ago, asked Nami. Yes, until just 200 years ago, that dark history was reality. 
Fishmen and mermen were considered normal fish, and were discriminated by humans all over the world. Everyone looked down upon them. Those strong fishmen, asked Nami as she remembered Arlong and his crew. Even the strongest creatures are powerless when outnumbered. This continued until the world government decided to lend a helping hand to Fishman Island 200 years ago. That's just another piece of the rather dark history of the human race. On this archipelago, slave trading and selling of human lives is still acceptable. So I think, maybe the discrimination of mermen and fishmen is still common here, too. Then, could that be the reason why Hachi and Kami had to disguise themselves on this island? I hope I'm just reading too much into things, though. Bratty girl. Robin. The two looked to see Frankie with some flying fish. Frankie. Hey, stop calling me, bratty girl. Hurry up and get on the flying fish. That mermaid was kidnapped. Kami Chan. Said Robin. Kidnapped. With that they jumped onto the flying fish. With Luffy, Hachi, Papug, sorry, Straw Hat. I just wanted to help, but I ended up causing you trouble. Said Hachi. What are you guys saying? You haven't done anything wrong. The three of you are my friends. No matter what might happen, we'll definitely save Kami. So stop crying. Straw Hat. It's the flying fish riders. We've been looking for Yar. Get on, shouted a rider. With no hesitation, Luffy jumped along with Hachi who had grabbed Papug. They split up and continued the search. After about 30 minutes, a call rang out over all the riders. This is Unit 5, to all rosy life riders. Can you hear me? The guy who took the mermaid is Peterman. The place they took her to was the auction in Grove 1. That was all they needed. Everyone took off towards Grove 1. Auction house. The first to arrive was Chopper followed by Sanji. Sanji Kun. Chopper. Announced Nami's arrival. Oi, everyone. Kami. They looked to see Hachi and Papug. Then came Frankie, who happened to arrive when the others were having an argument in order to get Kami back. Like I said, why can't you give her back? I'm telling you that Kami Chan is not for sale, said Sanji. You're the one who's out of line here. If you don't drop it soon, I can take legal countermeasures. You're disrupting our business, said the pink blob of a man. What do you mean, business, you damn bastard? Do you think I'll accept a business like this in this world? A lawless pirate like yourself has no right to lecture me about morality. Slave trading is a worldwide taboo. How much did you pay the government? Asked Nami. What an ill-mannered accusation, but I suppose you're right. When talking to the government or marines, it seems that terms like, slave trading, are hard for them to comprehend. It's as if they have no idea that this business ours exists. How ridiculous. So the whole system is crooked, then? Asked Sanji. How can the government tolerate this? Asked Nami. What do you mean by that? How can you do something so horrible? Asked Chopper in his human form. That's just how things are, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, could you please? This is annoying. We're sure the mermaid is in there, so let's just break her out. Said Frankie as he got ready to blow up a section of the wall, but was stopped by Hachi. No, there are celestial dragons inside. And if Kami has been brought here, then she's probably got a neck ring already. Then, we can't just get her out. Said Chopper. If you'd please leave then. That's when Nami started walking off. Hey, girly. Where are you going? Asked Frankie. If we can't just take her back, then we'll just have to play by their rules and get her back that way. Said Nami. With that, they entered the auction house. Boss, those guys are from the Straw Hat Pirates. Said one of Kid's crew members. I don't see their captain, though. I would have liked to see firsthand just how much of a big shot he is. Said Kid. That's another rookie with a bounty over 100 million, Black Leg Sanji. He's worth 110 million, said Killer to which Kid just smirked. To have three rookies worth over 100 million apiece on the same crew, just what kind of guy is their captain like? Flashback an hour ago, fallen monk pirates. Captain Captain we have trouble, said a random crew member. Oh and what sort of trouble do we have him? Questioned Yuruj. M.M. Monkey D. Luffy has just docked in Grove 41. Came the scared response of the crewman. Yuruj instantly became nervous, so he has shown up after all. Fire tank pirates, hey boss we got a problem. A really big problem. Stated one of Capone's men. What could possibly be a big problem for us? 
MM Monkey D. Luffy has just docked in Grove 41. Instantly Capone paled. I thought we would have been gone before he got here. Bonnie Pirates, Captain Bonnie we have an issue that will cause you to lose your appetite, said one of Bonnie's men. Bonnie who was in the process of putting a restaurant out of business responded in between bites. Oh really, munch, I seriously, munch, doubt, munch, that. SS Straw Hat Luffy has just arrived at Grove 41. There was the sound of plates breaking against the floor as Bonnie sat there with a terrified look thinking, oh god I didn't think he would get here this soon. On Air Pirates, yo Cap'n we got a problem that needs to be brought to your attention like now. So what is such a big deal that I can't have five minutes of peace him? Asked Scratchman Apu. M.M. Monkey D. Luffy has been spotted in one of the towns. Apu was instantly nervous. No not him. Heart Pirates. Captain we have a problem, said a white bear. Oh and what is the problem Beppo? Asked Trafalgar Law. M.M. Monkey D. Luffy has just docked in Grove 41. Law's eyes widened slightly. So he has finally arrived this should be interesting. Drake Pirates, Captain Drake a problem has come up and it is serious. And what could be a problem of such a serious nature? Asked X Drake. M.M. Monkey D. Luffy has just anchored at Grove 41. Drake instantly became nervous as his eyes widened. So the most dangerous rookie out of all of us has arrived. Hawkins Pirates, Captain Captain. You have come to tell me of a problem well let's hear it. Said Basil Hawkins as he was shuffling a some cards. M.M. Monkey D. Luffy has just docked in Grove 41. Instantly the cards went all over the ground as the usual stoic Hawkins began to think. So somehow the most dangerous man on the first half of the Grand Line made it here without my knowledge, this cannot be good. Kid Pirates. Captain we have a problem a very big problem. Said a man with a mask with holes on his face. And what killer, could possibly be a problem for the future Pirate King? Asked the eyebrow less Eustace Kid. Monkey D. Luffy has just arrived. Kid instantly became quiet. End flashback. And the next one is. Entry number 14. This time it's a female human. Not only can she do housework, she's also good in bridge, chess or any other game. This is the best for customers that have nothing to do in their free time. Bidding starts from 600,000 belly, said Disco down on stage. Hey, this one is better than the last one, said a woman. Failure. Why did I buy that other girl? However you look at her she's better than the other one, said a young man. Too bad for you. I'll take this one then. 700,000 belly, said an old looking man with number 51 on his panel. 900,000, 1,200,000, 1,500,000, 2 million. 3 million, those bastards, said Sanji. Anyone bidding higher? Anyone? Sold to number 51 for 3 million belly. Will this happen to Kami, too? Asked Papug. We'll get her back no matter what, declared Nami. But, under this situation, how? Asked Frankie. Right now, we have a fair amount of treasure in the ship. Even at a low estimate, I'd say it comes to at least 200 million. How much does a mermaid go at? Asked Nami. With that much you should have no problem buying her, but I could never pay back all that, said Hachi. What? Hachi, are you supposed to be her guardian or something? No, that's not it, but, this is our friend who's been stolen from us. We'll get her back no matter what it costs. Got a problem with that? Not a chance. Money's no object, said Chopper. You guys, thank you so much. I will never forget this debt, said Papug. Okay, let's just skip to Zorro. Closing parenthesis. Zorro had been looking for Grove 1. 13. I thought I just walked past number 2. I must be imagining things. Zorro was thinking back to how he got here. Earlier. Zorro was walking down the middle of a street drinking a bottle of sake when he saw some guy with a bubble over his head in his way. Captain Apu. He's the pirate hunter from East Blue. Why is he walking in the middle of the road? Doesn't he know anything? Zorro didn't pay any attention to the whispers around him. Instead he stopped in front of the bubble head, Charlos, and stared. You want me to give you directions or something? The bubble head fired two shots at him but Zorro ducked and dodged and was about to end his life, but was tackled to the ground by some girl. Brother. Why do you die? Brother. You tried to attack a celestial dragon Sama. Then of course you'd die. Cried the girl but Zoro tried to move. 
Brother, stay still, she whispered. I hit him. For a moment, it seemed as though he had dodged it. Was I imagining things? Well, as long as he's dead, then it's fine. With that bubblehead took his leave. Once he was gone Zoro sat up and realized he had some sort of red liquid on him. Why do you get in my way? And this is tomato juice. Ha! Huh. Don't say we got in your way dumbass. What the hell were you trying to do? Do you want the admirals to come to this island? Even pirates have their own unspoken laws, you know. You just caused us a whole lot of trouble too. Shouted the now normal jewelry Bonnie. Zoro however ignored her and went on about his way. That bastard. For a moment, he really was ready to kill him. What a beast. Said Apu. A second in command worth 120 million. He doesn't seem like the type who'd follow orders. I guess that saying something about his captain, ha, huh? asked Yurush as he watched Zoro leave. Present, then he ran into some pathetic bounty hunters which he quickly beat and got directions from. However he was going in circles and now upset that they gave him wrong directions. Luckily for Zoro some of the hunters passed by him. That guy just now sure was scary. Pirate hunter Zoro, with a bounty of 120 million belly certainly lives up to his name. To clash with that kind of guy, we wouldn't survive no matter how many lives we have. We better pray we don't see him again, they said together just as they passed Zoro. When they realized who it was they took off running. Hey, wait a minute, said Zoro, as they stopped in their tracks. I remember that you are. Zoro proceeded to give them a quick beat down. Why have you come here? You aren't giving me the wrong directions, are you? Asked Zoro. We wouldn't dare do that kind of thing. We are seriously pointing you in the way to Grove 1. Then why did you run away? Ta that is because. Being stared at by those scary eyes. Zoro. Zoro looked up to see Luffy on a flying fish. The flying fish came down closer to the ground. Hurry up and get on. Kami has been kidnapped. Zoro didn't hesitate as he jumped onto the flying fish with Luffy. They took off for the auction house at full speed. Auction house. Ladies and gentlemen, the product I am about to reveal to you all. Should be enough to completely blast all thoughts. The curtains closed before they opened to reveal Kami. Direct from Fisherman Island, it's the mermaid Kami, shouted Disco. It's the real thing. A fresh young mermaid. Awesome. It's a special item everyone wants. Kami, it's Kami at last, said Hachi. All right, time to take her back. We have 200 million belly to burn if we need to, declared Nami. Kami, shouted Papug. Great, it's the real thing. They're really selling a mermaid, said Saint Charles. Since it's been a long time since we have sold a mermaid, everyone must be very excited. So, what should the starting bid price be, said Disco. We have to act first. We'll definitely take you back, declared Nami. Then let the bidding begin. Starting with, but Disco was interrupted. 500 million, I'll bid 500 million belly, said Charlos, which caused everything to go silent. Nami's eyes widened and she dropped the bidding number. 5 minus 500 million belly? No use. We can't beat that. What's that? We don't have that much, shouted Nami. You've gone and wasted our money again. You already have piranhas in your fish tank, do you not? Asked St. Roswald. I'd like to see them try and chase after her. Mermaids are the fastest sea creatures in the world, said his son. Kami, is there really nothing we can do to prevent the celestial dragons from taking her? Asked a crying papug. It would appear that the audience has been rendered speechless. Well does anyone want to make a higher bid than 500 million? If not, then this auction will be quite a short one, said Disco. There's got to be something we can do. Is there no way? Hey, Sanji. Nami. This can't be happening. They can't take our friend away just because we don't have enough money, said Chopper. This is bad. We never considered this possibility. If we can't get her back with money, then the situation has gotten even worse, said Sanji. Now that it's come to this, I might as well just take her back by force and run off to the sea, said Hachi as he tightened his fists. Don't be ridiculous. What about the neck ring? You just blow her up, shouted Papug. Then I just have to get the key to that ring somehow, said Hachi. That's enough time, said Disco. I did it, said a grinning Charlos. It's like a symbol of how messed up the world is. I've seen enough of this farce. We're leaving, 
said Kid as he and his crew started to leave. Well then, thank you for your attention up until now. The main prize this time, the Mermaid Cami, goes to the world noble, Saint Charles. For the price of 500 million belly. It's a deal, said Disco, but just as he hit the gavel there was an explosion up near the entrance. How noisy, complained Roswald. Well, that could have been a better landing said a voice that when the smoke cleared revealed Luffy and Zorro. Hey, that's Straw Hat Luffy, said Kid. W what is he doing here? So what has happened with Kami? asked Luffy. Luffy, Kami was bought for 500 million, shouted Nami. Luffy narrowed his eyes and turned around. Oh really? he asked as he started to descend the stairs, but Hachi tried to hold him back. Luffy didn't slow down a bit as he just continued to walk forward. So who here bought Kami? Come now, don't be shy. Wait a moment, Straw Hat. What do you think you're trying to do? asked Hachi. What's it look like? I'm going down there to get Kami. She is right there, but she is still wearing the exploding collar. That is why we can't get her out now. Furthermore, this concerns the celestial dragons. And I care why. Stop right there. Just then, the four other arms of Hachi grabbed Luffy in an attempt to stop him. Once people saw this, screams rang out. Ah, that's a fishman, shouted a woman which caused Hachi to let go of Luffy who was still moving towards Kami. It's disgusting. What is a fishman doing here? You monster. What is a fishman doing on land? Disgusting. Don't come near me. Your existence itself is already scary enough. That's when people started throwing really anything they could get their hands on at Hachi. What's going on here? Asked Sanji. What Robin said was right. There is a lot of discrimination towards fishmen and murfic on this island, said Nami. Discrimination. Kami and Hachi are both. Started Chopper but was interrupted when a shot rang out. I hit it. I shot the fishman, said Charlos as he danced around. Luffy looked over his shoulder and narrowed his eyes. He turned around from the stage and headed straight for Charlos. But Hachi grabbed his arm causing him to stop and look down. W wait. Please. Straw hat. You can't. Get upset. I was just careless, that's all. You promised that. Even if someone was shot right before your eyes, you wouldn't lay a hand on the celestial dragons, right? After all, I used to be a pirate. But Hachi was interrupted by Luffy. I know, but I've kept quiet for long enough. I will not let this go. With that Luffy continued on his path to Charlo's with a murderous look in his eyes. You, what's with that look of yours? Are you looking at me? asked Charlos as he aimed his pistol at Luffy. Luffy didn't stop and just continued forward. He isn't that bold, is he? questioned Kid. He wouldn't, thought Law. You're annoying, too, said Charlos as he fired two shots at Luffy who just dogged both and appeared in front of Charlos with his arm pulled back. Luffy infused his fist with his devil fruit and delivered a devastating punch to Charlos sending him crashing through the seats before crashing into the wall. There was silence for about two minutes before someone finally spoke. As Saint Charlos, said one of the armored guards. See Charlos, said Roswald. Sorry, you guys. If I hit these guys, they'll call an admiral from the navy and a warship here, said Luffy. Because you went and beat him up. I didn't get to cut him, said Zoro after he sheathed one of his swords. Meanwhile Nami had ran to check on Hachi. Hachi, hang in there. You guys, did something terrible. Well, it's Luffy we're talking about, so we couldn't help it. Well, then, said Sanji as he lit a cigarette. Then, it's clear what we've got to do next, right? asked Frankie. I'm sure the key to Kami's neck ring is somewhere behind the stage. I have to take a look at Hachi's injuries, so I'll leave this to you, said Chopper still in his human form. You guys, said a crying papug, back to the situation with Charlos. Ah, Big brother Charlos. Not even father has ever hit him, shouted Shalulia. Roswald stood furious at what had happened to his son. Why, you, how dare a lesser human like yourself lay a hand on my son, shouted Roswald while aiming his cane that was a rifle at the straw hats and started firing. This caused the people to panic. H he angered the celestial dragons. Run, outside. Everyone but the kid pirates and heart pirates took off. Hurry up and get out. Don't push. So now everyone but the, the pirates, the celestial dragons, Disco, and guards are outside. Meanwhile Roswald kept firing at a still Luffy and continued to miss. 
I shall let you know what happens when you lay a hand on the descendants of this world's creators. Sanji took off and jumped in the air and flipped forward and smashed the rifle into the ground. Think we care about that, bastard? How dare you attack Saint Roswald? Shouted guards. I don't feel like writing out the whole scene so basically guards just keep showing up no matter how many the straw hats take out. Yes Luffy is taking out a lot of guards, but they just keep coming even after knocking some out with his haki. Zoro sent an attack that cut open a section of the ball Kami is in. The rest of the straw hats arrive and knock out Roswald. Father, shouted Shalulia, even Saint Roswald. Those pirates committed another sin. Usopp, Robin, Brooke, said Luffy as he saw that they had arrived. Now, we're all here, said Nami with a smirk. Luffy, where's Kami? asked Usopp. She's down on the stage. As soon as we manage to remove that exploding neck ring we're out of here. If we don't hurry, a warship and an admiral will arrive, shouted Nami. The navy is already here, straw hat, said Law as he finally decided to speak up. Luffy just turned to see who had spoke since the guards seemed to have dwindled down to the last group. Those guys have had this hall surrounded since before the auction started. After all, there's a HQ outpost right on this archipelago, said Law. Outside the auction house, the marines were giving out orders having already surrounded the place. Please leave in an orderly fashion. It's all right. We're here. How are things inside? All the guests seem to have evacuated, but the celestial dragons are still in there. Hurry up and get them out. Those pirates had better not think they'll be able to leave safely. Back inside, I have no idea who they wanted to catch. They couldn't have known that someone would nearly kill the celestial dragons though, right? You've showed me something rather interesting. Straw hat crew, said Law. You are Trafalgar Law, right? Luffy, he's a pirate. And the man standing up top over there, is Eustace, Captain, Kid, said Robin. Ah, so these are two of the big shot pirates, eh? Well we don't have time to deal with them, said Luffy when footsteps broke the silence that had been there since Law started talking. The straw hats looked to see Shalulia on stage. She was on a ladder with a gun pointed at Kami in the ball. Unforgivable. Now that it has come to this, I will just kill the mermaid they came to save. The 500 million belly. Please, please wait, Princess Shalulia. We haven't received the payment for that item yet. Please, wait, Princess Shalulia, pleaded Disco who was still on stage as well. Be quiet, you inferior human, shouted Shalulia as she shot Disco. Now, fish, I shall finish you off for good this time. Damn it, Kami-chan, said Sanji, just as she was about to pull the trigger a blast of Haki swept through the room. I was about to do the same thing. Who beat me to the punch? Thought Luffy who was relieved when he saw Shalulia foam at the mouth and faint. P Princess Shalulia. Suddenly the wall behind the stage was split open and an old man and a giant walked out. Have a look at that, giant coon. The hall is a complete mess. Seems like the auction is over. Seeing how I've stolen some money. I guess I'll be returning to the gambling hall. Said Rayleigh. I don't feel like describing him. Closing parenthesis. What a foul old man you are. You came here just so you could steal money. Asked the giant. I wanted to steal from whoever bought me as well. Well, that's impossible now. First, I've got to get more sake. Although, come to think about it. I'm pretty old. So who would want a slave like me? Ha 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 ha. That's when Rayleigh looked around the hall. What? Seems like I drew some unwanted attention. What's with that old man and the giant? Asked a guard. Weren't they auction items? How'd they get out of their cages? Asked another guard but then realized something. Their neck rings are gone. How'd they get them off? What should we do? What? We weren't hired to catch prisoners who have escaped. There's no way we could retrain a giant. Ah Rayleigh, said Hachi. Rayleigh, you mean, the ship Kota. Which one of them? Asked Chopper. Why, if it isn't Hachi. It's you, right? It's been a while. What are you doing here? Where'd you get that wound? Hachi was about to tell him but was interrupted by Rayleigh. Oh, you don't have to tell me. Rayleigh looked around the hall stroking his beard while taking in the situation. After about 20 seconds he pieced together what had happened. So this means, I get it. I've figured out what happened. You've gotten yourself into quite a mess, huh, Hachi? Rayleigh looked at the straw hats. Were you the ones who saved him? Well, then, 
With that Rayleigh narrowed his eyes and sent a wave of harky throughout the hall knocking out the rest of the guards. Not only is Straw Hat Luffy here but this guy, said Kid who was still at the back. No way, said Law. All the Straw Hats were on edge due to the fact this guy could use harky like Luffy. Rayleigh looked directly at Luffy. That straw hat of yours. It really fits a fearless man like yourself. I've wanted to meet you. Monkey D. Luffy. With that Rayleigh moved to Kami and held his hand over her neck ring. I'm going to remove that collar now. Is that all right, young girl? Hey, Gramps. Don't do anything reckless. It's gonna explode. Shouted Papug. We've already seen what it's like when a slave's collar explodes. Shouted Chopper. That was horrible. Absolutely horrible, shouted Brooke. Is that really okay, Luffy? Asked Chopper. Luffy decided to wait and see what happens. Wait, Frankie is looking for the keys now, right? We should just wait until he finds them, pleaded Usopp. That's right, please stop him, Straw Hat, shouted Papug. It's all right, stay still, said Rayleigh as he ignored all the shouting. Rayleigh touched the collar and it started ticking. At the last minute Rayleigh flicked his wrist taking the collar off Kami and once it was away from Kami it exploded. Just after it exploded Frankie burst through the wall with the keys relieved that Kami was okay. What the hell? Scaring me shitless. She doesn't have a collar anymore. Said Frankie. Papug took off towards Kami and when he finally reached Kami he jumped into her arms giving her a hug. Kami. Thank goodness. Cough cough. As much as I like to see a happy reunion. We should be getting out of here, said Luffy. Rayleigh nodded and walked up the stairs to Hachi while Frankie carried Kami. You're not gonna die, right, Hachi? I always told you that you shouldn't walk around this island. Sorry, said Hachi who was now cover in bandages. Thanks a lot, you guys. You helped my friend out. I'll talk to you guys once we get out of here, said Rayleigh. Suddenly they all heard a voice. Criminals inside. Please release the celestial dragons. An admiral will be here shortly. I'd imagine that it would be safer for you to just surrender. You don't know what will happen otherwise, rookies. So they're not just dragging us into this, but they're totally treating us as if we were his accomplices, too, said Law. I see that Straw Hat Luffy is every bit as bold as the rumors said. Not to complain, but I'm not gonna stick around to clash with an admiral. I'll be going on ahead. As an extra favor, I'll save you guys. I'll take care of the cleaning outside. So just relax, said Kid as he started heading out with his crew. No way am I gonna be saved by him, said Law as he also headed out with his crew. The straw hats started to leave, but Luffy stopped when he heard a groan from somewhere. Luffy looked over to see Charlo's on the ground. He walked over to him and picked him up then punched him in his face again sending him into the wall. With that Luffy and the others headed for the exit. Outside auction house, the building had been surrounded by marines waiting for something to happen. They got ready when Kid and Law stepped out of the building. Take aim. Both of them are captains. Only two came out. Both have bounties easily exceeding 100 million. Over in the shadows of the exit were the straw hats. Luffy what are we waiting for? We need to get out of here. Said Sanji. Relax. I just want to see my so-called competition. They're gonna cause a huge uproar. Said Usopp. You're a little late on that part said Luffy as he watched and saw both Kid's and Law's devil fruit abilities. Interesting. Kid can control metal and Law can rearrange your body. Well I've seen enough, said Luffy as he stepped out of the shadows. Oi, that straw hat Luffy, shouted a marine causing the action to stop. Luffy walked by Kid and Law and stopped short of the marines. You two have interesting abilities. However I don't have time for you two to try and decide the winner of a pissing contest said Luffy as he balled his fist and swung it sending a shockwave through the marines. So the rumors were true, thought Kid and Law still upset at what Luffy had said. Fire the mortar cannons. Twelve cannons shot at Luffy who stood there until they were close to him. He swung his arm destroying all the cannon balls. Damn it. We have to hold them off until Admiral Kazaru gets here. Enough of this said Luffy as he swung his arm for a third time sending another shockwave out destroying the mortar cannons and then sent a wave of Haki out. Those two things effectively cleared the area for them all to leave. Ha ha. Why, that wasn't half bad, said Rayleigh. Everyone but the straw hats were staring in shock at how easily Luffy had handled the marines. Well, see ya later, straw hat.
It was a pleasure meeting you in person. But I won't show you any mercy the next time we meet, said Kid. Luffy just turned his head and smirked. Am I supposed to be scared? You can threaten me all you want I'm still gonna be the one to find one piece. This caused both Kid's and Law's eyes to widen slightly before returning to normal. Let's meet again in the new world, said Kid as he left with his crew. We will see each other again, straw hat Luffy, said Law as he left with his crew and the addition of Jamble. Look him up. All right guys let's get out of here, said Luffy. With that they headed back to Shaki's rip-off bar. Shaki's rip-off bar. When they arrived they were greeted by Shaki. Oh, Ray san welcome back. That was fast. I'm really impressed that you guys found him, Monkey Chan. Hachi is badly injured, so we've got to get him to bed fast, said Rayleigh with Hachi on his back. What happened? Never mind, I'll get a bed ready for him. Once they got Hachi situated Rayleigh sat down to talk to the Straw Hats. On the Pirate King's ship, shouted Usopp. Yes, I was the Vice Captain. I'm Silver's Rayleigh. Nice to meet you. Vice Captain, shouted everyone but Luffy and Robin. You didn't tell them, Hacken? Asked Shaki. We only needed him to coat the ship, said Hachi. Oh, you didn't notice? Asked Robin. I totally know that name, said Usopp. It's written down in so many books, said Nami. That's definitely a name everyone's heard at least once, said Sanji. Gold Roger, there might have been a rookie by that name, or maybe there wasn't, said Brooke. How does that octopus know a big shot like you? asked Zoro. Well, Hachi helped me out once when I was stranded at sea over twenty years ago, said Rayleigh. He saved his life. He was just a child at the time, though, said Shaki. Hachi and I used to get along pretty well before he joined the Sun Pirates, said Rayleigh. But, if Gold Roger was executed 22 years ago, how come you, the vice captain, are still alive? Your crew was captured by the Navy, right? asked Sanji. We weren't captured. Roger surrendered to them. I suppose the government claimed that they'd captured him to show their power. The Pirate King surrendered. Why? asked Nami. He could see the end of our journey. It was probably about four years before he was executed. Dot dot. Roger caught an incurable disease. It was a disease that nobody could cure or stabilize. Even Roger suffered from it, but. But one man, the most well-known doctor of his time, a man called Crocus of the Twin Capes, had the skill to ease his suffering. We asked him for help, and he joined as the ship's doctor for our last journey. And then, three years later, while holding off Roger's disease. We did what they said was impossible, and conquered the Grand Line. C.C. Crocus San, from the Twin Capes. Oh, how nostalgic, said Brooke. What? I thought that old man had been at those capes for fifty years, so he was part of the Pirate King's crew, said Usopp. Come to think of it, he did say he'd been a ship's doctor for a while, so he was a pirate for those three years, questioned Nami. If you met him, then that must mean that he's still well. Crocus only had one condition. That we let him look for a certain pirate crew whom he wanted to find. Hey, Brooke. That must mean he went off to sea to look for you guys, shouted Usopp. So Crocus San even did something like that for us, asked a tearful Brooke. He was only a crew member for three years. But he was, without a doubt, our Nakama. At my age, I would really like to see him again. So, what happened after you conquered the sea? asked Sanji as he put out the cigarette he was smoking. After that, Roger became known all over the world as the Pirate King. It's not like he'd been called the Pirate King all along. Titles like that don't mean much for a man on the verge of death. But, Roger was happy about it. He was a man who loved doing everything in grand style. Dot dot. Be it celebrations or battles. Even though he knew he wouldn't live much longer, he seemed to enjoy himself. Eventually, at the captain's orders, the Roger pirates disbanded. We all went our separate ways, and one after another, everyone disappeared. I have no idea what our Nakama whom we risked our lives with. And now, nor what they are doing. Then, one year after the crew dissolved. Roger turned himself in and was arrested. It was decided that he would be executed in the town he was born in. Logatown in East Blue. I hear that on that day. Dot dot. Countless pirates who are famous today were gathered in the square. The Pirate King's execution was the center of attention for the world. I didn't go, 
These were the last words he said to me. I'm not gonna die, partner. I'm sure both the world government and the navy were surprised. They had intended for the execution to be a warning to all the pirates who saw it. But Roger's last words raised the curtain on the great pirate era. My treasure? If you want it, it's yours. Look for it. I left it all at that place. Just a few seconds before the flame of his life went out, it flickered. And turned into a blazing flare that covered the entire world. I've never laughed as hard as I did that night. I've never cried as much as I did that night. Nor have I ever drank as much as I did that night. He led a marvelous life as my captain. Once Rayleigh finished there was long moment of silence before Nami spoke. Seems like we just heard quite the story. It sounds completely different story coming from someone who was involved. Then, it's almost as though Roger intended to start this pirate era, said Usopp. I can't say anything for sure about that. Roger died. The ones creating the current era are those who live right now. I'm sure there were a lot of people who received something from Roger in the square that day. Shanks, whom you know well, was one of them, said Rayleigh while directing the last part towards Luffy who had been sitting quietly. I'm not surprised that you know Shanks. If you're from East Blue, then maybe you know a pirate named Buggy as well. Those two were swabbies aboard our ship. Shanks was on the Pirate King's ship, asked Luffy with a slight chuckle. I'm surprised he didn't tell you. It was about ten years ago. I encountered him by chance on this island. He'd lost his trademark straw hat and his left arm. When I asked him why, he excitedly started telling me about you. Quick flashback ten years ago, we find Rayleigh and Shanks. Rayleigh San, I was really surprised. There was a kid in East Blue who said the exact same thing Captain Roger said. Those exact same words as the captain, said Shanks. This caused Rayleigh to smile as he listened to Shanks tell him about Luffy. Present. Ever since then, Monkey D. Luffy, I've wanted to meet you someday. If Shanks hadn't told me all those things about you, I wouldn't have told you any of this either. Anyway, you did well to make it this far. He must be waiting for your arrival in the new world, said Rayleigh which got a smirk from Luffy. Well the situation is like this, so, I was supposed to coat your ship, right? I suppose I'd better get to work, then. Come to think of it, ship coating costs a lot of money, said Hachi from the bed he was lying on. No, it's fine, Hachi. I won't take any money from your friends. That's good. Thank you, Rayleigh, said Hachi. I don't really get it, but it's great that he'll do it for free, shouted Usopp. Thanks for that. You're really generous, said Sanji. Seems like we're going to save quite a bit, said a thrilled Nami. Rayleigh San, I have a question. Exactly what is the will of D on the poneglyph I saw on Sky Island? Roger's name was engraved with the ancient language. How did he know those letters? Do you people know what happened during the void century, 900 years ago? Asked Robin in a serious tone. Yeah, we know. We learned the entire history. However, miss. Don't be so hasty. Please push forward with your ship, one step at a time. Perhaps we, as well as O'Hara, were too impatient. If I were to tell you the entire history here and now, it's not like you could do anything the way you are now. After you've taken your time to see the world, the conclusion you'll reach might be different from what we found. If you still want to hear it, then I'll tell you everything about the world now. After the shock finally wore off, Robin gave her answer. No, don't tell me. I'll continue on my journey. You'll see it all eventually. It's too bad about what happened to your homeland, O'Hara. But Roger couldn't actually read those letters. We were pirates. We couldn't possibly compare to the genius Clover, or the other O'Haran's intelligence. He, could hear the, voice of all things. That's all there is. Hey, are you sure, Robin? Didn't you just let a great chance slip away? Hey, old man. I wanna ask something too. The legendary treasure, One Piece. Is it really? However Usopp didn't get to finish as he was interrupted by Luffy. Usopp. The tone was calm yet cold. I don't wanna hear where the treasure is. I don't even wanna hear if there is a treasure or not. I don't know anything about it, but everyone sets off to sea to find out for themselves. If Rayleigh were to tell us anything here, then I'll quit on becoming the Pirate King. This is supposed to be an adventure full of danger. If we're going to have a boring one, then I won't do it. Ah, I got it. I got it. Sorry, I just got carried away. I don't wanna hear anything either. Oh, yeah. I've got the, I'll die if I hear anything about One Piece, disease, 
so don't you dare say anything, old man, said a panicking Usopp. Can you do it? The Grand Line far exceeds anything than you can imagine. The enemies will be strong too. Can you conquer such a terrifying sea? Asked Rayleigh as he stared at Luffy. Luffy smirked. I don't want to conquer anything. It's just that the person with most freedom on the sea is the Pirate King. In that moment Rayleigh saw Roger behind Luffy. I see. I'm really a big fan of yours, Monkey Chan, said Shaki. The ship is in Grove 41, right? I'll be going there. What about you? The Admiral is still coming to this island, you know, said Rayleigh. We'll just cause trouble if we stay here. So let's go somewhere. And shop, said Nami. Are you out of your mind? We're being chased, so we have to stay hidden, shouted Usopp. She's right. If we stay together, people will probably come after us. In order to get off more smoothly, it'd be better for us to split up in town, said Frankie. Then, we'll just randomly split up into groups and gather up when he's done, right? Asked Zorro. Talking about gathering up like it's a plan. Whose mouth did that come from? Asked an irritated Sanji. Shaki, you have that, right? Asked Rayleigh. Yeah, I've got one. With that the straw hats and Rayleigh went outside, where Shaki gave them each a piece of a Vivra card. Outside, this is a Vivra card, said a shocked Nami. Oh, if you know about it, that makes things easier. I'm a wanted man too. So I think I'll move the from Grove 41 and work on it somewhere else. The coating should take about three days. It takes three whole days? Asked Usopp. Your lives depend on my work, so that's the fastest I can do. So we have to survive for three days. Scary, said Brooke. Shall we say sunset in three days? I'm not sure which grove I'll be in, but just follow the Vivra card, and I'll be waiting for you with the ship coated. You'd better go buy whatever supplies you'll need for your underwater trip to Fisherman Island. Thanks a lot, Luffy Chin and everyone, said Kami who was still there. Really, thanks, said Papug. This all happened because of me, so sorry. To show our gratitude, we'll show you the way to Fisherman Island, so don't worry. Watch out for the Navy for the next three days, said Hachi from inside. Hachi, watch your health, said Chopper. Let's meet again in three days. I'll be there to send you off okay, said Shaki. Then let's get going, said Luffy as the straw hats left. Take care, shouted Kami. Don't be too reckless, shouted Papug. I guess I should go, then, said Rayleigh as he left to go coat the ship. Sometime later and at a random grove, the straw hats were walking. But who'd have thought, that we'd meet one of the Pirate King's Nakama in a place like this. It surprised me. How should I put it? He really left an impression, especially for a geezer, said Frankie. Well, he is the most famous of Roger's Nakama, after all, said Usopp. So he was a Nakama on the Oro Jackson, huh? I'm glad I met him. So, you're the type of guy who respects his elders? Asked Usopp. It happens from time to time, said Frankie. However everyone stopped when Luffy did. Oi, Luffy. They followed his eyes and everyone immediately tensed. There was a man standing in front of them. Bartholomew Kuma of the Shichibukai, said Luffy. The straw hats were walking. But who'd have thought that we'd meet one of the Pirate King's Nakama in a place like this? It surprised me. How should I put it? He really left an impression, especially for a geezer, said Frankie. Well, he is the most famous of Roger's Nakama, after all, said Usopp. So he was a Nakama on the Oro Jackson, huh? I'm glad I met him. So, you're the type of guy who respects his elders? Asked Usopp. It happens from time to time, said Frankie. However everyone stopped when Luffy did. Oi, Luffy. They followed his eyes and everyone immediately tensed. There was a man standing in front of them. Bartholomew Kuma of the Shichibukai, said Luffy. Oh go vote on the poll on what should happen to Ace, so let's begin. He's one of the seven warlords, shouted Usopp. Sanji noticed Kuma raise his hand and aim for the crew. No matter what, don't let that attack hit you. It's a shockwave. Kuma shot out a yellow beam straight at the crew only for them to dodge. What in the world was that? shouted Nami. He could even do this, shouted Usopp as they covered their eyes from the flying dirt. Luffy went to stand in front of Kuma. Well, that doesn't appear to be a shockwave. Luffy cracked his knuckles, but Zoro and he both thought the same thing. Something strange, 
You guys find somewhere and lay low for three days then meet up on the Thousand Sunny, said Luffy. Before the straw hats could reply Kuma fired a beam from his mouth to which Luffy sidestepped. Luffy took off hoping to draw Kuma away from his crew. Kuma did exactly what Luffy wanted and followed him. While chasing Luffy Kuma was firing beams out of his mouth only for Luffy to continually dodge them. After running and dodging for about 5 minutes Luffy jumped over a beam and flipped forward and punched the ground causing a good sized chunk of land up blocking the last beam before stopping. Luffy turned and faced Kuma. I know you're not the real Bartholomew Kuma. That just leaves the question of why. Luffy didn't finch as he jumped to the left to dodge a beam from behind. Luffy looked behind him and saw another Kuma. What the? I didn't even sense him. I can't read either of their thoughts either, just what are they? Luffy wondered. However Luffy quickly jumped into the air to dodge another beam and spun to the left to dodge only to be hit by a third beam. The hit sent Luffy crashing down and skidding across the ground. When Luffy came to a stop he rose revealing his bare and slightly burnt upper body and a cut above his right eye. Okay, this is bullshit. Just how many of these things are there? However Luffy would not like the answer to that thought. Luffy didn't wait to be fired at again so he charged at one of the Kumas. He punched the ground causing a crack to head towards another of the Kumas, which lost its footing leaving only two at the moment. He jumped over the beam and nailed the other Kuma with a quack punch to the head. This sent Kuma flying until he dented one of the larger trees. Imagine Luffy's surprise when the Kuma got out of the tree and revealed half of the face missing and the other showing electronics. So they are robots, no wonder I can't sense their moves. Damn, this is going to be interesting. Luffy got ready as the three charged at him. When they reached him they threw their punches only for Luffy to weave in and out of them. After about two minutes of this Luffy found the openings and struck. First Luffy did a quack scissor kick to the head of the one he hit earlier effectively putting it out of commission. Then as he was falling he spun and with a solid right to the jaw and as Luffy landed he sent a kick straight to the chest of the same Kuma sending it flying. The last one threw a punch to which Luffy ducked underneath and grabbed the arm and flipped it slamming it into the ground. Once the Kuma landed Luffy punched its elbow which took its right arm off at the elbow. Luffy then quickly jumped into the air and sent a quake kick straight back into the head of the down Kuma. Luffy reached down and ripped off what was left of its head. Phew, two down one to go, oh come on. Shouted Luffy as he saw the Kuma that he sent flying come back. Only four more were with it. They stopped about 10 feet away from Luffy, who was slightly panting. Luffy noticed the one in the middle was carrying what appeared to be a Bible. That's the real Kuma. However what happened next shocked Luffy. The real Kuma raised both of his arms and sent a shockwave that disabled the other four. Well as much as I wanted a fair fight I am curious on why you did that. Monkey D. Luffy, I am here to give you information. This shocked Luffy even more. Information regarding what exactly? It is not about a what, but a who. I believe you are familiar with Portogus D.A. so you not. Luffy narrowed his eyes once the name left Kuma's mouth. What about Ace? You haven't heard about it yet how interesting. Said Kuma as he walked forward while removing his glove on his right hand. Luffy was slightly nervous although he didn't show it. Haven't heard about what? That Portogus D.A. has been captured and now sits in impel down awaiting his execution. Luffy was now panicking on the inside. Ace is going to be executed. Like hell he is. Why would you tell me this? I used to work with your father so I know about Ace and your relationship with him. But the real question I have for you is this. If there was a way to save him. Luffy didn't hesitate with his response. Yes. Then here is what must happen. You will leave now without a word to your crew, but do not worry I will take care of them. Are you ready? Asked Kuma with his arm raised and directly in front of Luffy. If you are lying to me or you kill any of my crew I will find you and I will kill you. We will not be seeing one another again, farewell. Good luck saving, as Kuma said this he brought down his hand onto Luffy sending him off the Sabra de Archipelago. Present, Ace, shouted Luffy as he shot up off the ground he had been laying on. Where's Ace? Quick do not let him start attacking otherwise, he may destroy the island. Shouted Jinbei as he and the heart pirates jumped on top to try and hold Luffy still. Luffy snap out of it. Luffy didn't seem to hear Jinbei as he just threw everyone off him and took off into the jungle of Amazon Lily. Jinbei followed after him to make sure he didn't lose control and destroy the island. 
He sat off to the side for roughly 20 minutes while Luffy used only pure strength to tear apart the jungle before he stopped and looked to the sky while panting. Where am I? The last thing I remember was, Luffy didn't finish as he dropped to his knees and remembered what had transpired. The war is over, said Jinbei as he moved to stand in front of Luffy. Sir Ace is really, Luffy didn't finish as he was hit in the back of the head by a small rock. Ace is really what? asked a voice that Luffy clearly recognized. Luffy turned to the direction of the voice and his eyes widened when he saw who it was. Sir A. Ace is really, Luffy didn't finish as he was hit in the back of the head by a small rock. Ace is really what? asked a voice that Luffy clearly recognized. Luffy turned to the direction of the voice and his eyes widened when he saw who it was. Present. Luffy stood there staring at the person in front of him. He tried to speak but the words were stuck in his throat. What? You have nothing to say? Asked the man. How are you alive? I saw you die. Why are you taunting me God? Said Luffy as he grabbed his hair. Oi, Luffy. Calm down. I didn't die. Said the man with a caring smile. However Luffy didn't want to hear it so he punched the man in the face sending him into a tree leaving an indention in it. Ow. What the? Luffy. You are here. I'm gonna kill you for making think you were dead Ace. However, as Luffy jumped at Ace Jinbei grabbed Luffy. I thought you should see for yourself so you would believe with your own eyes. Luffy threw off Jinbei and recomposed himself. Luffy finally really looked at Ace and saw he had his right side wrapped up. Ace meanwhile got back up and still had the smile on his face. So where exactly are we? We are on Amazon Lily. The Empress allowed you two to be brought here to hide you from the Marines stated Jinbei. Okay. How long have we been here? By this point the three were making their way back to where they had docked. We have been here for a few weeks. As they arrived back at the edge, Jinbei noticed that Law was gone. However there was someone else there along with a small ship. Marco. What are you doing here? Oh, hey guys. I'm here to take Ace back once he is ready. The Whitebeard pirates are still around so we still need him. He said with a smile. But I just found out you're alive, said Luffy. Don't worry I'm not leaving for like a week. So that gives us time to catch up before I leave. Luffy didn't like the fact that it was only a week, but he figured it was better than nothing. For the next week the group was paid visits by Hancock and some of the other women who brought food. Also Ace told Luffy about what all had happened since he had woken up. On the day that Ace was set to leave we find the two brothers having a conversation. Are you sure you don't want to come with me? I could use you on my crew. Luffy, you have your own adventure to go on. As much as Luffy wanted his brother to come with him he understood his decision. Before I leave I have one question for you. What is it? Did a buster call really destroy Eni's lobby? Shushushi you know me too well. I destroyed it before the buster call began. I thought so. Well, I'll see you around Luffy. With that the two brothers hugged one another. Oi, look after him Marco. Hey. I'll think about. With that they set out with Luffy watching them until they had sailed off. After they had gone Rayleigh arrived. Rayleigh, what are you doing here? I came to check on you. I'm okay but did you really swim all this way just for that? Ha 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 you got me. I came to see if you wanted to come with me and train. I don't want you getting rusty while your Nakama are away training. So how about it? Luffy took a moment to reflect on everything that had happened and ultimately agreed. So after talking to Hancock about what was going to happen the two set off for an island while Jinbei headed back to Fisherman Island. However before they all went their own way they went to Marineford. Time skip two years later. Two years have passed since the war between the Navy headquarters, the Shichibuki, and the Whitbearad pirates. On the desert island northwest of Amazon Lily Ruskina. Luffy. Yeah. I'm coming. He shouted back to Marguerite. While he said to himself, I can't believe it. It's been two years already. Luffy walked out to the opening at the edge of the coast to find Marguerite, Hancock and her sisters, and Nyon waiting for him. They saw that he changed his outfit up. He's wearing what he's in after the time skip. Luffy, the ship is ready to sail at any moment. Okay, thanks. Let's get going. We put everything that you like on the ship. And I think I'll be a good wife since I'm thoughtful like that. Said Hancock while sporting a huge blush. Someday, yeah said Luffy with a grin that almost made Hancock faint. Rayleigh left six months ago. He must be waiting to see you at Sabradi, said Sandersonia. All right, let's go. 
Shaki's ripoff bar. We find Shaki and Rayleigh drinking. It's been two years. It went by fast when I look back now, said Shaki. Yeah, I can't wait to see how much they've grown. Don't be hasty. We don't even know if they can all get together safely. Because they're famous throughout the world now, said Rayleigh, but just as he finished, the door opened to reveal Zorro. Ah, you're the first to arrive. What? Nobody has arrived yet. They never change, said Zorro with a grin. Over ten days later at a bar, we find Nami sitting at the counter getting a drink. Did you know that the Navy HQ has been relocated? Asked the bartender. What? Was it? Yeah, they switched its place with the G1 branch symmetrically over the red line. That's how determined the new fleet admiral after Senguko is. After all, he set up the HQ in the sea where the Yonko operate. But thanks to the switch the HQ has less sway here so there are more lawless areas on this island. Hmm, no wonder this town seems rougher than two years ago. Finished Nami as she heard something interesting. Hey, did you see this? Yeah, I was shocked, too. I can't believe the straw hats have surfaced again. Yeah, no one has heard from them for two years so we thought they were dead. Nami saw the flyer the men were holding which stated that the straw hats were recruiting. I can't believe they're recruiting. Pirates who survived through the first half of the Grand Line coming to this island. So he wants to expand his group here to run wild in the new world. It's so exciting. Maybe I wanna join. No way. There are people with bounties over 100 million on the island now. They're not gonna take you for sure. Suddenly the doors burst open and it was silent in the bar as they walked in. Ha ha hey, old man. Give me a drink. And something to eat, too as much as you have, demanded the fake Luffy. Why yes, right away. Hey, could they be, I have no doubt. They're, the straw hats. After some time some man approached the fake straw hats. However he only made the walk to be shot by fake Luffy. Ah, did I hear it wrong? A 55 million belly bounty, said fake Luffy as he taunted the man on the floor clutching his stomach. Check the poster once again. It says, at least 70 million belly bounty. We're not gonna deal with captains with less bounties. How did you guys even get here safely? Damn it. Go away, pest. Don't you know that I'm Dragon the Revolutionary's son? We don't need some half, ass. Because we're the chosen pirates, said fake Frankie. We're in another league. Don't think that just anyone can join us, stated the fake Sodge King. Go home. With that fake Luffy shot the man again effectively killing him. He's so merciless. Straw hat Luffy can't be helped he has achieved a lot. Hey, Frankie. How many people we got so far? Asked fake Luffy. About 100 people. Three whole pirate groups joined us. Ten of them are with a bounty. That's good. Two out of the ten are high-profile rookies. Wet-haired, caribou and, blood splatter, Corobo who are known for killing navy soldiers. They're captain brothers with 210 million and 190 million bounties. It's great to have them. Let's get more followers. Old man, we need more drinks. Why yes. Hurry up. Oh, and you woman, who's been there for quite a while. He said addressing Nami. Stop drinking alone quietly and come join us. However, Nami didn't budge. Hey sister, can't you hear me? Hey, he's talking to you. Said the bartender. Sigh that's okay. I'm waiting for someone. What? She turned him down. Hey, hey. You better say yes. He's straw hat Luffy. Remember? He's the crazy pirate who burst into the war of the best two years ago. You know him, right? Ha 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 waiting for someone. He must be a wimp who'll apologize in tears once he hears Captain Luffy's name anyway. So come here now, demanded fake Sogeking. I'll only say it once. You're no match for me so I'm not gonna drink with you. What? Do you understand, straw hat? Who? Did you say, who? I'm Straw Hat Luffy. Hey, you better apologize. You're in danger, said the bartender who was now panicking. With that fake Luffy pulled his pistol and pointed it at Nami. However, he didn't notice a new person walk in. You've got a lot of nerve. However, before he could shoot her fake Nami intervened and took his pistol. Let me handle it. Hey you. You're a funny woman. Then I'll make it easier for you. Are you gonna drink with Captain Luffy? Or do you wanna die? For your information, I have a bounty, too. I'm a cat burglar Nami. Don't mess with me. But before she could get a shot off she was stopped. Sure kill. 
Green Star Devil before the fake Nami knew what was happening, she found herself in the jaws of what appeared to be a giant Venus flytrap. WH what is this? What is this? Asked fake Luffy as him and the rest of his crew were also attacked by the plant. Help me, Captain! Screamed fake Nami. You fool! Stay away from me! What is that plant? Asked Nami. So, young lady, do you want a drink with me? Nami turned around to see Usopp sitting at the next to her. When she saw him she immediately started squeezing him to death with a hug. Usopp, long time no see. I can't believe it. You became stronger. It's not that hard to believe, is it? What? She had been waiting for that geek. Shouted the fake Sodge King. Did you do that? Asked Nami pointing her thumb towards the plant. Yes, I did. That's my new weapon Pop Green. It's not like I was watching the sea and doing nothing for two years. I'm sorry but I no longer belong to the weak trio with you and Chopper. I became a warrior who isn't phased by anything. Hey, dude, is this what you've done? What? So gecking. Why? Usopp, forget about them. Let's go somewhere else. I need a favor to ask you, too. Said Nami as she started dragging Usopp out of the bar. Wait, you guys. Ha. Huh. Luffy. Let's go. Hey, mom, you haven't paid yet. Said the bartender. Usopp threw the man a sack of belly. Keep the change. Nobody noticed the bubbles with thunderclouds start to gather above the fake straw hats. Damn. This is setting a bad example FPR others. Bring him back, shouted fake Luffy. Ha! Huh. What are these black bubbles? That's when they looked up to see the bubbles had popped to form a thundercloud. What the hell is this? A cloud. Boom. Outside the bar. People were just going about the day when they saw the bar get struck by what appeared to be lightning. What happened? So I studied about the new technology, stated Nami as she and Usopp continued to walk by without even caring to look back. Really? You were in the sky? After that the two disappeared. Back at the bar, the fake straw hats burst through the doors covered in bruises. Find those two and kill them, demanded fake Luffy. G1 Marine Base, I have a report. At the Sabra de Archipelago. What? The straw hats? Yes, sir. Word is that they're recruiting new crew members there. Let the headquarters know about it. If he's really alive, that's not good. Call soldiers up right away and intensify the search on the Sabra de Archipelago. Grove number 33 Sabra de Park, a concert hall Sabao Dome. We find thousands of people gathered outside to see Soul King Brook. Hey, don't say that. Can't you do anything, pleaded a random man. Tickets are sold out. Of course they are. It's the world tour of superstar Soul King Brick. And today is his last show. The place is already packed, stated a guard. Inside the Sabao Dome, Thousands of fans are screaming for Soul King Brook. It is going crazy with how much energy is in the room. However, we find Brook backstage in his dressing room. Manager, I'll put on a great show today, declared Brook. Yes, that'd be nice. Your TD is doing very well and they have sold over millions of copies now. You certainly are the king of soul music. Listen to the crowd, stated the manager. In the silence Brook could hear the chant Soul King repeated over and over again. Manager, before the concert, I have something important to tell you. Brooke stated in a serious manner. What is it? After this concert, I quit. And with that Brooke went out on stage leaving a speechless manager behind. After a few minutes the manger was finally able to speak. I can't believe it. How selfish can he be? Hey, give me a transponder snail. I'm not gonna let you do whatever you want, Brooke, stated the manager. In a town on Sabradi, Robin had arrived earlier but was trying loose the person following her. He had been following her ever since she set foot on Sabradi. So she disappeared into the crowd and turned down an ally to hide. She watched as the man ran by without looking down the ally. Did I shake him off? She then pulled out two posters, one of Soul King Brook and the other the recruitment poster for the Straw Hats. Brook's concert. The Straw Hats recruitment. What is going on? What is Soul King? Thousand Sunny, there's no mistake. There isn't even a scratch on it. Sorry to keep you waiting, Sonny. We'll be sailing out soon. Said Frankie as he inspected the thousand Sonny for damage. Another grove in Sabradi, Sanji has arrived and is more than ready to say goodbye to the Okama. I've missed Sabradi. I'm finally back. However he started noticing beautiful women everywhere and, well let's face it, 
Sanji had been stuck on an island for two years training with guys that dressed up like women. So it is no surprise when he bolts off chasing women. I'm a real man Sanji. Just come back from hell. That ends the story of Luffy as an emperor. Hope you like it. Like, share and subscribe. Kushino.